testing, 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 one, two, three, all right, everyone, welcome back to another Friday night live stream, this time from our living room, mm -hmm. because I am feeling a little under the weather today, so uh, I decided that we're just going to do a good sit down chat and a giveaway live stream all in one um, to be able to take and, uh, you know, hopefully bless some of you out there in the community with some good blacksmithing tools, mm -hmm. so... Uh, thank you for being here. Thank you for joining us. I think it'll be a good time, uh, notwithstanding, you know, even though I have to be a little bummed up here sitting on the couch. So, mm -hmm. but uh, anyways, so welcome, welcome, welcome everybody in. So. Yes, Black Collar Ironworks, thank you for using your member chat. <laughs> and we look forward to seeing how the draft plays out tonight. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And thank you for being a gold master smith level. Mm -hmm. Amazing. The Famino one sent a ten dollar super chat and says, "Figured I would stop by to show you guys some love and support on your channel. By the way, congratulations on hundred thousand subs. Love you guys. This is Jonathan." Hey, thank you, Cuz. Appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. So, so a hundred thousand subscribers—that's pretty crazy. And uh, you know, so we celebrated that with a hundred k live stream on February twenty eighth. Uh, on February twenty yeah, eighth. So yep. As soon as we hit ago. it. <laughs> and now we're up at 316, 317,000 subscribers, which is insane. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. uh, uh, it's kind of crazy. It's so <laughs> that, that, it's, crazy. <laughs> that it's expanded and grown so much in such a short period of time. <laughs> so. Patrick Breslin says, "Digging the beard." Hey, thank you, Keith Boston Sausage. Glad to have you. Hello, hello. Good to have everybody here. Yep, Stephen Parsons, you are a chan channel member now. He's one of the new ones. See, uh, oh, yeah, all the yeah. cha all the channel members, they have little icons next to them we designed. They're pretty mm -hmm. small, so it's kind of hard to tell what they are. But they're different colored anvils, uh, depending on what mm -hmm. like how long you've been a member. And then there's like a flame behind it. So the anvils and the flame are in different colors, depending on the, um, the length of membership. Yeah. Jeff Parkett says, hey, better soon, Roy. Thank hey, you. Better soon, Roy. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, Williams Brown says, I love y'all's videos. Watching y'all is how I got started a couple of years ago with a 55-pound Harbor Freight. Cool, cool. Glad you got started. That was the important part. So uh, I'm, I'm glad that that could be. So, so uh, just got back from uh, Central Virginia Blacksmiths Guild's 25th anniversary uh, hammer in. I was a conference demonstrator there along with the likes of a bunch of knife makers like Ben Abbott and other Forged and Fire alumni. And there was also another artist Smith out there that named by by the name of Andrew Molinero. Um, he was a pretty cool guy to end up meeting, and I uh, had a wonderful time getting to meet some of you there. And you know, it was it was a blast for me. It was really really super encouraging for me to be able to go to there, go to that event, and uh, you know, the amazing thing about the event for me personally was all of the kind words that everybody had about that similar thing like hey you helped me get started hey i did this that what have you because of you or hey i got my business started because of you things like that um and uh that 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 humbles me like you wouldn't believe and i'm very very thankful very thankful um for for that so thomas getting a pharaoh roy lol yeah that's <laughs> right yeah old thomas is uh um, he's icing down some huevos right now, <laughs> or the lack thereof, as I keep te teasing him. He went and had the snip, if anybody knows what I mean by that. Oh. <laughs> so I've been calling him a eunuch um, in the shop for the last several weeks, and that's been the joke. Uh, so it's like, you know, I said I never did fancy myself as a pharaoh, but, you know, we'll take it. See what happens when we deal uh, with natural lighting. Yeah, there's a little bit yes. of. <laughs> Roy gets to let's, glow like a golden angel. Yeah. <laughs> let's just agree, Roy is right with this one, isn't it? Yes, yeah, the yes. husband's right about controlling mm -hmm. the light. Yeah, yep, just, yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we got a little bit of sun on that. See, I was like a golden pharaoh there for a second, right? <laughs> yes, yes, you were. <laughs> oh. Uh, Tragic Visions 1 says, have you already exceeded your own expectations on YouTube or have you always known you were going to grow as a channel? Um, I have 
I, I would say I've exceeded the expectations, or, or the expectations, not I have exceeded, but the expectations have been exceeded as far as, as far as I figured I would ever grow. I figured maybe 100K someday, but um, I'm not, I want to say, I'm not as peppy of a personality or an individual as maybe what, or I don't come across as peppy of an individual on camera as maybe that I should. You know, I wear my emotions on my sleeve, so, you know, if I'm not having it that day, I've learned not to get on camera during those days. You know, I used to just get on camera regardless, and you'd see the, you'd ride the wave with me. <laughs> um, now, I only get on camera if I'm feeling good and I'm able to, uh, bring something to people in a positive manner, a positive way. Uh, but, you know, it used to be a little bit more wild ride on the channel. So I never I never thought that I would get to 300,000 or anything like that. Certainly the goal was to hope to get to 100K subscribers. That was the, that was the goal someday, like everybody's goal is. But I always thought that anything above 100K, that was relegated to you know, gamer channels and, <laughs> you, you know, stuff stuff that I find stupid, basically. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, right. stuff that people of low brain cells, that's the, their channels. That's what I always, you know, figured that it would get to. So it's, it's mm -hmm. kind of crazy that the channel's grown like it has. We might be having a live stream, who knows, in another, you know, couple months, few months, when things cool down, we might be having a live stream of come watch us, come watch us implode as a channel because <laughs> you never know that the, the numbers they're just numbers um, what matters to me are the people who show up and you know show up every day and year you know year after year day after day to my regular content that's that's what matters to me those subscribers um, as far as the rest of the 99.9% .9 .9 well if they start pulling their weight then I'll care too about those but it's hard to tell why people subscribe and when they don't and when they do and uh, you know the one particular video we had we did a mokume uh, out of quarters uh, it was something that I made for Thomas me and Thomas made together he had never done anything like mokume he was interested in it I said sure we can go about doing it and we made like a little ring dish for his uh, you know for his significant other there and so you know that's you know that's that's what we did and then that video the regular video of us putting it together I think only had like what 8,000 views if in even. total yeah. for like a year mm -hmm. for like a year of them sitting up there it's only that original video only had 8,000 views Jessica recut it and edited it into a short because I decided I'm not doing any shorts I'm not interested in doing shorts so I had just so Jessica's like well I want to do shorts so I let her have that. So she's been mining the hard drives for shorts to point people back to the older videos. And for whatever reason, that particular video went insane. And it's had over 100 million views now. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, it popped off like crazy. And so mm -hmm. the, the, the largest demographic, 31% of those views have come from India. So, <laughs> yeah. you know, and, and most of the subscribers. So, you know, hey, I'm really popular in India now. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully I stay you, that you way, and hopefully the Indian Smiths that are coming to this channel and the people that are from India that find it interesting, entertaining enough that they'll stick around and be part of the channel as well. But, but we shall see. We might be having a different kind of stream in a few weeks, <laughs> where we're just imploding. You might have your face up on a billboard over there. I might, <laughs> or or might go like, oh, watch us, you know, watch us go to zero. <laughs> <laughs> Possum awesome Sausage so. says, could you imagine 300k on the chat? No, we'd have to turn on slow mo, and even at that, it would probably get bad. And then I'd have people angry at me that the chat is speeding on by, mm -hmm. yeah, and that they can't have conversations. So, <laughs> Jeff Bar Jeff Barquette says, so just as the brains, lol. Um, it is very challenging to take what is a 20 minute video and chop it down to less than 60 seconds, like to try to include the crucial parts. I'll say it's very, mm -hmm. and again, it's not meant to be comprehensive. It's really just a taste of what's happening. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's it's an interesting thing. Some of the things that go viral or the most popular things out there are really things that are not the most intelligent. 
<laughs> things in the world. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, you know, but that's the way it is, you know. Virality doesn't mean intelligence. Um, but yeah, Jess, you know, Jess is a very crafty woman, very crafty woman. She's very good at putting together things. Um, and she usually has a pretty good amount of foresight uh, over me. You know, she'll see, she'll see areas of opportunity that I'll be like, nah, I don't want to be interested. Ah, he takes some convincing. I'm not interested in that. <laughs> you know, and then after a while when she starts doing good at it, then I'm like, hmm. Well, maybe. I <laughs> might just like, well, let that. me tell you. It's like, this well, let me butt on it. in here and tell you how to do it, you know, <laughs> where you could do better, you know. That's, yeah, it's been the story of our relationship. So <laughs> the facts are Jessica would be way better of a woman without me hanging around. But nah, I'm, gla I'm glad she keeps me. I'm glad she keeps me around. So. The Bach maker says you're less of a shorts guy and more of a kilt guy. <laughs> I'm more of a pants guy. Full pants. Solid button up. <laughs> I leave everything to the imagination. <laughs> Roy Bollywood. <the> bo <laughs> That's funny. Brian S. 1118 says I use the shorts to find the old projects. Yep, there's a bunch of them. Yep. Keith Tonzig, that's great. Uh, he says, uh, well, Roy, it's like I tell my wife, behind every great man is a better woman. That's right. That's right. Couldn't do it without her. So in so in the stream tonight, we're going to be giving away a treadle hammer. I know we're not in the shop, but we're still going to give away a treadle hammer kit this year because it is the year of the treadle hammer. I just wanted to mention that real quick about the things that we're going to be giving away. So I'll we'll be giving away one of these treadle hammer kits, and I've got some fun stories to take and tell about that that we had at the uh, Central Virginia Blacksmith Guild conference because Thomas was demonstrating that there and, uh, and you know had some pretty interesting stories around that. But not only will we be doing that, but we will also be giving away some sticker packs as well. Um, and I don't think Jessica has anything on that, but it'll Good have morning. the coveted Year of the Treadle Hammer sticker in it for 2023. Artwork designed by my very own daughter, my oldest daughter, Abigail. And uh, so, so we'll be taking and giving some of those away, as well as uh, Dana Maggiore came in clutch like he always does. So thank you, Dana Maggiore, for coming in. Super awesome with stickers. But I have a 100K sticker to take and celebrate reaching 100,000 subscribers, which is funny because now we're going to have to have them reprinted to something else <laughs> at some point. They might be saying a million in there. We'll just, we'll, we'll draw a in a zero over here or something, yeah, you yeah. know. Um, ahead, you know, who knows, maybe someday. Uh, but, <laughs> but anyways, uh, my daughter also drew this, and it says, winner, winner, chicken dinner, 100K subs. So, uh, we'll be giving Roy with the cute eyes. Yeah, with the cute eyes. My daughter's <laughs> was all about. So, so, we're, so if you want a Roy with cute eyes, we'll be giving one of those away uh, with the sticker packs. Um, and then also, I have some 100K sub play buttons I'm going to give away as well. So these I ended up making in the uh, previous, February, previous 28th. February 28th live stream. I'm going to give 10 more of those away this evening during this live stream and then uh and then also we have some tongs from keith bear at possum sausage forge he has some tongs that he's going to take and uh, be giving and shipping to you they are chain makers tongs which is awesome and he, he'll be shipping them direct from his place so we will need your address so this way we can sh pass it on to keith bear so he may send you these awesome chain maker tongs that he mm -hmm. uh, finished up making so and, uh, and then also we also have a we have a giveaway item from Thomas Goody Moot as well. Thomas Goody Moot wants me to take and give away some more beeswax. So we'll be giving away some more beeswax to a couple lucky individuals. Mm. Yeah. Yep. So uh, lots of good things there. Uh, there are some other things that are planned for in the future live streams where I've got a bit more time, more towards the summer. Uh, right now I've just been swamped. I just got back. I've been slammed in the shop. Thomas went and had a little surgery, so he's gonna be out of the shop for a while. So I've been like, yeah, not feeling yeah. great. So it's like, okay, we've got, <laughs> I've got too much to wrangle in right now. But there are some really cool things that are happening on the channel. And uh, there's gonna be some really cool giveaway items as a part of that 
going forward. You know, at least I hope so. Uh, there's some uh, brands that are reaching out, obviously, as they do when you get more and more uh, virality about you. And so there's been some brands that are reaching out, and I'm going to make them pay to be part of the channel. That's the <laughs> sponsors coming to Christ Center Ironworks. Sponsors coming to Christ Center Ironworks, <laughs> but sponsors in a good way because I'm going to make them take care of my community. <laughs> so um, they just don't know it yet. I haven't sent them back emails mm -hmm. yet because I've been like, oh Lord, no, I don't want your woolen socks. You know, just no. <laughs> My feet are toasty enough. Yeah, my feet are toasty <laughs> enough. For all the brand partnerships, we see where you could do better. You know, it's like, oh, really? I got on your radar, didn't I? You know, so mm -hmm. it's like, you need my services. No, I don't, actually. So, <laughs> so. But anyway, so I plan on uh, adding some real interesting sponsorship things to the live streams. Mm -hmm. you know, Speaking of which, something that is coming up uh, at the Central Virginia Blacksmiths Guild, I ended up taking and getting uh, a fly press while I was there. I got a number two fly press from John over at blacksmithsupply.com. <laughs> Boom. That's why it's he like, gave you that shirt. Yeah, that's why he gave me this shirt, you know, it was in it. Actually, it's pretty comfy. It fits mm -hmm. nicely. Oh, um, so. Holy cow, 50 members. <laughs> It's black collar. Black collar ironworks. Good <laughs> lord, son. The black collar. It's not even like the black collar army anymore. What is it? It's like a the brigade. Continent. I don't know. The continent. Oh, <laughs> it's going to be the black collar continent here before long. Thank you so much for that gifting of that. Oh. And Heath Miller also gifted. Hey, five. and Heath Miller. Thank you for the gifting of the five memberships. <laughs> oh man. Woohoo! That's all you got to do is say woohoo. Thank you all for that. That's that's amazing. Everyone's so. going to be members. <laughs> <laughs> Literally everyone. Did he do another one? Um, a 25? No, that's... Uh, oh, that was his original... Okay, super, original comment. Okay. Super comment. Oh, well, thank you all. Thank you very much for gifting those. So if you just got a membership gifted to you, <laughs> thank Black Collar Ironworks. Round of applause. And Heath Miller. Round of applause for that. Um, yeah, it's a legion now. That's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> the, so anyways, that, that threw me off my spew. Let me get back yeah, to my sorry. spew. Um, so, yeah, so I hauled back. Um, that was a whole interesting journey to come back from, uh, from Central Virginia through ice storms, rains, traffic. Had a guy sideswipe my trailer. Uh, craziness. Anyways, it was a crazy ride to get back. We made it back in one piece. Thank God. Me and me and Thomas were both so excited to make it home. Um, but anyways, we came back with two fly presses. Thomas Thomas got went and bought himself a real nice number five fly press. There's going to be some videos coming out on that. And um, I was given by John at Blacksmith Supply. I was given a number two fly press to check out and review and do some stuff with. Um, I've got some really cool things around chasing. I plan on doing like a chased hammer underneath it, this number two fly press, and doing a couple other projects. Predominantly, I wanted this little number two fly press for doing some chasing work. That, that was my main purpose of wanting to get this, uh, get this little smaller fly press so I can sit because with chasing, you don't want to be standing for 19 billion hours because it's going to take 19 billion hours to do some of the projects. So being able to use a fly press in a seated position uh, with, you know, just in a smaller fly press, a much smaller unit is going to be absolutely awesome. But I've got a lot of comparison testing I plan on doing between Thomas's fly press, the number two fly press that, that I got from Blacksmith Supply, and I also am going to do some uh, comparison testing between my number six fly press that I already have in the shop, uh, which is a what is a blocks blocksage and blocksage mm. Sweeney or so, Sweeney mm. and blocksage fly press. Um, so the one that I, the big blue monster there in the shop, I am going to do some uh, comparison testing with all of those. Everything from how much load do they actually put out, which is going to be really cool. Making making some more tooling videos around them, things like that. Um, but anyway, so John at blacksmith, uh, blacksmithsupply.com is su now a supporter of the channel and a, a, what do we call it, a 
my brain's farting here. Supporter, contributor. Not supporter, contributor, sponsor. Uh, sponsor. Oh. He yeah. is now, that was Un the word I was looking for. Unpaying. Yeah, it's sponsor, an unpaying but... sponsor, but mm -hmm. but that is the payment is the big fly press for the year. So he has gotten a, uh, a sponsorship for this year. So we're going to, uh, we're going to be doing that. Mm -hmm. And so be, be prepared, be prepared to hear a lot. Stuff. <laughs> be prepared to hear a lot of blacksmithsupply.com mm -hmm. situation going on on the channel. Yeah. Um, beyond that, John has donated so much to this channel in the way of um, Tom, -tongs. Tom Tongs and all sorts of other tools for what the last two years now mm -hmm. he's donated yeah, to PM. almost every live stream all, all, all the way up and he goes out extra big for the Christmas giveaway live streams, just like Hall and Anvil, they go all in on helping out this channel as well during those events and those live streams. So I have nothing but nice things to say, clearly, mm -hmm. because they're supporting the people that I, they're helping support me to support people I care about. And so therefore they're, they get big marks in my book. So, mm -hmm. so I have no problem doing that and they're both American made companies. Keith Miller uh, sent a member chat and said, let's get Christ Center Dan works to 500K and maybe he will make a toilet spoon while wearing a kilt. <laughs> maybe, maybe. 500K, here we come. Woo woo. <laughs> uh, Gwilyn Dawson Stanley says, I am a member now. What does this mean? Uh, it means several things. Mm -hmm. um, so members here on YouTube, uh, it's kind of like having a, if you've heard of Patreon before, it's where you're like a supporter of a certain maker. So in this instance, it's us. And so a few benefits come with that. Um, it'll unlock it. So now that you're a member, it'll unlock a section on our YouTube page. Like if you go to like our YouTube homepage and there's some tabs at the top, there's like home videos, and then there's one called membership. And if you click on that, uh, it'll have some discount codes to our website. So if you're wanting to order any blanks or anything like that, uh, you'll get discounts on that and digital downloads. Additionally, we recognize our members uh, at the beginning of live streams on the pre-roll and also in our regular full-length videos. Uh, Roy does put the members there as well. Yep. And yep. Um, I, I've, the members I've, wall too so, eventually. So, so I've, I've been a little bit slacking about getting names up on the videos here recently um, just because I haven't had an updated membership list. Jessica needs to, to, to do that for me. I've sat down. I've done some. I've done some editing, and then I've forgotten to put out. You know, thing. And I'm like, well, I need it. Just could update the members list. I just haven't put it in. So, mm -hmm. uh, the content that will be coming out here soon will have updated members members list as well on. I there, didn't so. realize when I when I update uh. I updated it today, and this is the first time we've been above a hundred members on the channel. We started about about. Mm -hmm. Nearly two years ago, yeah. I think. Uh, <laughs> Thanks a lot to Black Collar, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> to the Black Collar Army that's so uh, today, being a part of the members. We're so. gonna be like, well, Athel Ironworks also just gifted five memberships. Wow, as well, thank so you, Athel. We're gonna Appreciate be well it. above 160 members <laughs> wow. for this month. Wow, cool. that's great. Thank you, thank you for that. So uh, membership, membership. A lot of times, like I'll do things where. Um, you know, for like behind the scenes stuff, I'll do like little behind the scenes polls or may I have tooling, new tooling I'm about to release or drop and I'll ask membership first to kind of like give me some feedback of what they think. Um, you know, I'll also, you, you know, with, with membership, extra streams uh, occasionally members. we do the extra streams, you know, we do the stream after the stream for a member stream, uh, just a way of showing extra support there for the members as a way of saying thank you. Also, on top of all of our prices, you know, again, Jessica's probably already said this. I, I blinked out there for a second, but <laughs> she, 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 you're she trying probably, to comprehend all the members. Yeah, yes, yeah, I'm trying to comprehend that, and I was reading everybody. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, yes, I think yes. you're about to say we do do discounts for members. Yes, so so, yes. so we do do big discounts over our website over at. Um, blacksmithingblanks.com my brain is lost today Black too much is going on right so yeah com. so our website blacksmithingblanks.com where we have tools and we have blanks of all sorts and shapes and sizes members end up getting very large discount codes um, to go over there and buy because they're already supporting us on a monthly basis so we make the uh, discounts fairly large and mm -hmm. um, 
super generous in, in my opinion that they're, they're a super generous discount code you know usually usually companies will give you you know two percent off or five percent off or something like that a lot of our the majority of our membership discounts are from 10 percent 15 20 25 30 50 percent off things like that over on golden Blink. master so, smith that's right you get free digital downloads yeah go over exactly. there and download everything for free <laughs> e exactly so anyway so it, it's a nice it's a nice up uh, it's a nice perk plus i have a members wall and we are going to do a membership burn-in session. That's right. You're going to have Thomas so. help you, too. <laughs> now yep. it will take two guys. Yeah, because it's <laughs> going to take, take multiple two, sessions. It's going to take two people for sure. Mm -hmm. For sure. It's going to take multiple <laughs> sessions now um, to burn in all the names on the membership wall in my shop. So, um, And that is actually part of my shop. It's not a particle board that I can chuck away if I don't like <laughs> it. It's actually burned into the old lumber of my shop. So it's not going anywhere. <laughs> it's staying with the building. So... <laughs> yep, yep, Chris. Chris Schaefer says, yep, seems like a wood-burning stream night is going to be needed. I would recommend multiple nights due to the number of new members. LOL. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, we will have to do that. If, and if I if I know Black Collar Ironworks, he'll show up there and he'll like gift like 300 <laughs> memberships like all of a sudden. I'll be like, no, he'll be like, do it because I said so. <laughs> well. Might need a whole nother wall. We might. Yep. Oh, and Possum Sausage said earlier, I was reading his comment, that's why mm -hmm. I partly blanked okay. out, but Possum Sausage had said that he's saving up a box full of tools to give away, oh, cool. uh, you know, send to us so we can give away during our live stream, so. Awesome. Uh, yeah, so that's awesome, or during our Christmas giveaway live, which mm -hmm. is our largest giveaway live stream at the end of the year, which yeah. is a pretty good bash. Plane in the head. Mm -hmm. Got nine months to go on that. Yeah. <laughs> Speargrass. Roy, are you making branding irons to do the burning of the names? <laughs> no. <laughs> wood burning pen. No, just a wood burning pen. Mm -hmm. So I just trace over. I write them and then I trace over them with a wood burning pen. So. Chris Schaefer, we do have a CNC wood burning machine, but I don't know if it would work vertically <laughs> against the wall, <laughs> but that would make it fast. <laughs> we could try. We could try, although it would probably wreck the cameras looking uh, at it. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. don't want to do that. <laughs> Won't wreck the cameras, so. Oh, Thomas says he could do that while uh, he's healing up. <laughs> yeah. So. Oh, I want to answer this. David uh, David Dalton, wanting a power hammer. Treadle versus Da Vinci. Which one? Okay. So, the, the difference between the two. The Da Vinci power hammer, the revisited design that I did, it is more like a little mechanical helv hammer. Uh, it is fairly light and fast, so it will draw out things out like fire pokers and say stock up to say 5 8 square, but not much more than that. That's kind of what it was meant to do is draw things out rapid and fast. It's not meant for tooling or other purposes. The treadle hammer, like the treadle hammer kit that I have designed and, and has purposed, it is a single blow kind of hammer and you have to get a rhythm going with your foot if you want it to hit multiple times uh, to draw pieces out. So it's not really meant for drawing out purposes, so to speak, but it has been more designed for using top tools under and like having a striker there in your shop to help you in the shop. And all you gotta do is place an anvil under the sledgehammer that you provided to take and wail on it. And that can go up to 20 pounds. Um, you know, up to a 20 pound sledgehammer in its base configuration. So if you have the ability to have a three gallon air compressor and, and that's all it takes to run it, a three gallon air compressor with electric to go to it, you can hook it up with, a, with the air upgrade and you can just simple as a foot tap, just a tiny foot tap on your air cylinder and bam, it does the work for you. So I personally would recommend the treadle hammer kit. Now that's my own personal thing. Now if you're looking at like an inline treadle hammer, like a big inline treadle hammer, like a Clay Spencer style, that could still be valuable. You could add an air cylinder to that later on uh, and get kind of the same effect going on with the benefits of having it all in line and be able to do top and bottom tooling. But it's still not a power hammer. It's still a one hit kind of hammer it's meant to do chasing work under, punching work, drifting work, 
things where you need one hit here, one hit there, flatters, you name it. That's that is what I a, a treadle hammer is meant for. As whereas is if you went with the upgraded, not the Da Vinci power hammer design that I had, but like my beam hammer I designed. That thing is a drawing out monster. You can work up to an inch and a half material under that power hammer. And it's a beam hammer. It's a helv hammer style. And it hits very rapidly and fast. So if you put fullering dies underneath it, as it's moving up its 35 pound head up and down very fast, you can very quickly draw out material under a hammer like that. But it's not as nice to take and put tooling underneath it because it's very rapid and less controllable than a a, a one hit kind of hammer with those. They're two different kind of tools. So that's just my own personal hammers and things that I have designed. There's other hammers out there, but in those particular class types, whether it be a treadle hammer, an air assisted treadle hammer, or it be that's one type of hammer. A mechanical helv hammer is another type of hammer. And then you have a self-contained hammer. That's an air hammer. That's like your nozzles. That's like your ang yangs, um, and all the other hosts of them. The coon hammers, things like that. Those are all uh, those are all self-contained power hammers, and they all operate differently. They are all they all smack steel ultimately, but they all have a different kind of purpose and how they run. They're in different classes. So hopefully that makes sense. Uh, Harold Hotchkinson, when are you going to have the air cycle option released for your hammer? I am hoping to have that about midsummer. The air cycling options. Uh, my, I was planning on d finishing up all the designing and testing phase in the spring, but I got really packed up and booked. So I got booked out with too many things. I over leveraged my time this spring, so I ended up lose. So. My time is not my own this spring, so I'm hoping by midsummer to be able to have the air auto air cycle done. I have already cut, I have not tested out, I have already cut and started the process of the design on the heavy hammer upgrade that will take this, take the treadle hammer kit up to a 40 pound hammer. So the hammer head in of itself will be 40 pounds which is more than enough oomph to get any work done. It'll have a, the biggest thing that I'm testing out is the interchangeable die system I made for it as well, because I want it, I want it to be able to have a keyed in die system. So this way it's easy peasy for everybody to use, um, you know, and it's easy to make tooling for in source, in source tool steel to make tooling for it. So that's the, that, that's the big thing that I'm working on right now. Uh, that's gonna take a little bit more R&D and uh, it uh, costs a pretty penny, trust me. The, the R&D on it's costing a pretty penny because once it's cut, you know, I've cut, you know, just for the prototype, I have over $300 in steel already cut for it. And so, yeah, and that's just for the prototype. That's not even the finished thing that I have to make the finished thing and then approve and sign off on that and that and test that thing so you know mm -hmm. we're, we're out a little bit from that but the goal is is that the whole thing the whole thing put together when you if you buy the base kit on the treadle hammer kit I'm not trying to make this a big sales marketing thing about the treadle hammer but it is the year of the treadle hammer so might as well we'll, we'll talk about it for a second the goal is, is that you'll be able to take and buy the base kit which is the part that just holds onto your sledgehammer and gives you manual foot control power to take and whack on hot things with it. That you could go start in at the base kit. You could add the air upgrade, which is just the basic air cylinder option with foot pedal, and it's a one hit kind of option. If you decide you need some extra oomph out of that particular option, I'll have the heavy hammer upgrade available for you with interchangeable dies. And then if you decide you want the whole Monty, you can get the air cycling upgrade separately as well. Or you can buy all of it together in one complete package, one nice tidy package. And I want to keep that entire package under a thousand bucks. That's my goal right now 
is to keep that under a thousand dollars and i will guarantee you right now as i'm sitting here you will never find anywhere on the net a piece of power equipment cheaper than that not happening not happening so so that's the that's the goal i, I plan on changing the market space making that's my goal is to change the market space bring powered equipment down out of the stratosphere of being you know nine grand as your starting place um you know all respect to the guys out there that put in all the time and engineering and figuring out things and making their products be these perfect things um, and perfectly machined but it's just seven thousand dollars as a start is just way too high for like the 99 percent so i'm trying to fulfill a need in the market that is you know hey i got maybe a thousand bucks i could save up to this year i don't have twenty thousand dollars for an ang yang right um so instead of it being something where you have to re you know take a second mortgage out on your home uh to you know what i mean to to have it it's one of those deals where you know you could do it within a few pay periods and, and be able or you can buy it because it's modular you can buy little pieces of it at a time as mm -hmm. you have need for mm -hmm. one thing or the other you might buy the base kit and then buy the buy the base model and then buy the heavy hammer upgrade and then that's it and you say well you know that's all i need i don't have power out in my shop right i don't have power in my mm -hmm. shop but i could really use that mechanical advantage well it can just be all mechanical and leg power or you can do the upgrade as well so so that's the goal right now the air the air cycling option won't be available until you know uh, again mid to end of summer so probably june july that that time period is what i'm hoping for so we'll see long-winded i know huh <laughs> we should be giving some stuff away we should uh melissa Did wilson you have more stuff there Melissa Wilson says, I'm looking forward to upgrading to the air assist on my hammer. I use a striking anvil under mine now, and it works great. Awesome. So glad to hear that. Bill, Bill Wool says, Roy, do you have the flat plates for a 2x72 uh, belt grinder, belt sander available for sale? Uh, I do not have the flat plates or flat plattens for those. So not yet, Bill. And it's Bill Wheel. Bill, yeah, I was trying not to remember. Wool. I know. I was trying to remember. <laughs> the O is silent. <laughs> and makes an e joshua but, rivas says would you sell kits for the beam hammer uh the beam hammer is it would be something that i might revisit um i will probably revisit that design but it'll be done in a very different way it'll be in a different format in order to make it more conducive to be able to cnc cut the parts out whereas the beam hammer was set up in a way that there's a, there's fabrication involved in it you know there's a good bit of fabrication to make the beam hammer uh you know a possibility so i will look at that in the future most likely it'll have the same capacity as the beam hammer but a different footprint in fact there's a power hammer design that's going to blow people's minds that i will be coming out here very soon with hopefully by the beginning of 2024 and it'll be a fully finished power hammer so it'll be a it won't be a kit it'll be something that you can just buy um, and hopefully stay under about 2k and it will and it will go toe to toe with any hammer out there Stephen Parson says uh, Roy I bought the 132 pound anvil I saw the stress test you did and I blame you for this purchase hundred <laughs> percent well good <laughs> you can blame me all you like <laughs> I like that Kurt Martin says just got the C guillotine what do you think the life of the mild steel blade or tools would be if you bring hot steel to your cold guillotine dies, they're gonna last a long time. I've got, I don't you know, don't start me to lion. I've got a, a, a C-frame guillotine tool that I've been using in my shop for just years, years upon years upon years on a semi-regular daily, almost daily basis in a professional shop in their mild steel dies and they're still kicking. Um, the tops mushroom out like crazy and occasionally you have to dr either forge them back to shape or you or you grind them off and re-weld a little bit to the top of them but the front like the actual working ends they last an incredibly long amount of time 
and you don't have to worry about getting chip out like you do with tool steel uh, dies. It really comes down, if, if you're a hobbyist, if, if you're just working with it at home, chances are you'll never wear them out. Not in your lifetime. It's a chunk of steel, so. Yeah, if you'd yep. like to give away a few things, we can. Yeah, yeah, we can do that. Okay. Thank you all for the great comments as well. Jessica's been saving them and putting yes. them and you know, trying to go across, them. so. Yep. But uh, yeah, so thank you all for being here. So we should give something away. What, what should we be should. our first thing we give away, Jess? Um, we could warm up with some stickers. You want, you want to warm up with some sticker packs? Sure. Let's give away some sticker packs. Okay, so the way this works, as always, uh, usually I would, you know, ring an anvil. I'm just going to do a draw like that by mm -hmm. thumping the uh, table <laughs> mm -hmm. a few dozen times. And then when I come to a halt, Jessica is going to pick some random name from the comment section of people who are commenting. Um, yeah, that's about it. Mm -hmm. Highly encourage you to subscribe if you're not subscribed already, uh, because that way you'll know when we do more of these um, in the future. Mm -hmm. But basically, if you want to help us out by just putting stickers somewhere in your that comment. We know, we know you're trying yep, to get stickers. That way we know you're trying to get some stickers versus saying, I picked my belly lint today. <laughs> It Somebody came out blue, but I was wearing a green shirt. Wonder how that happened. <laughs> right? So that's the kind of side conversations you're having. You know, it'll look real weird on you and kind of slightly embarrassing if we're <laughs> if we pick your name. <laughs> so so include stickers somewhere in it. And like I said, let's go. Ready? All right. So we're gonna draw for the first sticker pack. And the first mm -hmm. sticker pack, again, the sticker packs are gonna have the coveted year of the and uh, year of the treadle hammer and also have the winner winner chicken dinner 100k sub sticker in there as well are we ready we're ready and one two three that feels the table who do we have uh anvil and fly forge with stickers anvil and fly forge congratulations you are a winner of our very first sticker pack of the evening we'll be giving away so boom get with us through the contact email in the description and give us your address so we can send you the stuff. The stuff. Send you the goods. Mm -hmm. All right, ready to draw for the second one? Mm -hmm. Who do we have? Ah, uh, <laughs> Possum Sausage with Goody Sticky. Hey, Possum Sausage, congratulations, <laughs> Goody Sticky. You got some, it, it's good and sticky. Stick these to everything. <laughs> you know what to do. You better know what to do by now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we ready? Just gonna stick them on your forehead. Yeah, <laughs> that's probably what it is, huh? <laughs> All right, three, two, one. Who do we have, Jess? Patrick Breslin with stickers. Patrick Breslin, congratulations! You are the third winner of a sticker pack from us here at Christ Center Ironworks. Get with us through the contact email in the description. <laughs> All right. Somebody did put <laughs> belly lint in their comments. Yeah. So how many, so how many more stickers do you want to give away? Uh, you want to do a couple more stickers or we want to do throw out do, some play buttons? Yeah, we could do some buttons. Let's give away some play buttons. So this is our 100K subscriber. Uh, thank you, play button. This is forged by me. Actually, and some of these were forged by me and Thomas. So there's both my touch mark and Thomas Goodymoot's touch mark on there. Uh, Thomas is becoming quite the famous dude. Uh, on the channel. He is my helper in the shop and my apprentice, if you will, the second in command beyond Jessica. So, <laughs> yeah. So basically, he's the second peon. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the first big peon, he's the second peon. So, and Jessica's the boss. So, anyways, <laughs> so it works out pretty all right. Um, so, anyways, uh, we are going to be giving away some of these play buttons now. Say something with play button in there. And uh, we will give away one of these. These are a limited time deal. These limited won't be coming edition. around. These limited editions won't be coming around again until we hit a million subs. It'll probably be something a little different then, too. So, so. And it'll be a different thing. Trust me. It'll be a different thing for a million subs. So we'll mm -hmm. have, we're going to go all out for and that. We do so. have, I did get those listed on the website. If yep. anybody wants one and you don't win one, they're on the website yep, also. They are listed on. Under but there's our merchandise section. But there is only, what, 100 of those available? I think we said. Um, yeah, but I didn't list that many because we're giving away some of them. So okay. Yeah. yeah. So so there's not that many available even on the website to purchase. So um, we're only giving away a few in the live streams, and then that's it. 
Mm -hmm. So limited. One That'll lucky person. Limited edition. We ready? Yes. Set. Are you ready? Mm-hmm. Who do we have? <laughs> Jeff Killian with play button. Jeff Killian, congratulations. You got a play button, sir. Get with us through the contact email in the description. You know the drill. The drill. Who do we have? Harold Hoskinson with play button. Harold Hoskinson, congratulations. You're a winner of a fine play button. You know the drill. Get with us. <laughs> Let's give away funny. another one yet. Okay. Man, we're burning through these, aren't we? We are. We are making up for lost time who do we have jess michael wright with play button michael wright congratulations you are a winner of a play button get with us through the contact email in the description i think we'll call that a good one okay right for right. right now sure so we gave away three sticker packs we gave away three play buttons mm -hmm. there will be more later to give away there will be more later and we'll now answer people's questions and yeah the ones i things like up. that yeah Jeff Barquette says, trying to join, and I'm not able to do it. Um, trying so to join membership? Probably, yeah. Okay. Uh, so most of the time, well, so you'll probably have to have already a, a stored Google payment for YouTube. Um, and then uh, in order to join somebody's channel, it's normally where the sub wherever you see subscribe, it's normally just right next to that. So. Yep. Yep. Uh, we should probably do a, we should probably do a screen record. Oh, yeah. Of that. Yeah. You should write that down. We need to do a screen record because mm -hmm. this comes up often. How do I, mm -hmm. how do I join? Right. Mm -hmm. We'll end up doing a screen record for the next live stream. That way, we actually can pop that up and show you guys how to do that. If if you want to become a member. K three X T X Ham Radio says, "Great demo in Virginia. Was able to see a YouTube star. It was great to see a YouTube star. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it's great meeting you there as well." Keith Tenzing says, power hammer versus press, what's the difference? And somebody else had asked, mm. which should I buy first? Okay, power hammer press, the difference. A press does what it says, it presses. A power hammer does what it says, it hammers under power. So a press is all pressure. It is great for larger, thicker materials. Uh, oftentimes a press can punch way above a power hammer's weight class for the same square footage when it comes to drawing down material. But there's a caveat to that. Presses hate thin material. They absolutely hate it. Uh, they, they just suck incredible amounts of energy out of the piece and they really suck once they get down to thinner material. Presses hate thinner material. There's a wide range of things you can do with a press. A press is nice and slow and controlled, but also presses are very dangerous. So presses are, um, I would say, one of the most dangerous tools in the blacksmith shop right next side of an angle grinder. So just because a press has a scary amount of pressure that is sitting there laying in wait, and because you don't hear a big thump or you don't hear a bunch of banging, because you don't, it, you know, you can't visualize the pressure that a piece or a part is under. Um, that's what makes them so dangerous uh, to be around. Now, a power hammer, on the other hand, a power hammer, I would say, is more versatile than a press because, being blacksmiths, we like to hammer things. So if you get a power hammer that is capable of doing tooling underneath it, you can put everything from tooling underneath it to rapidly drawing out bar stock, and a power hammer doesn't care how thin that material gets, it will still move it, even cold. Presses do not. Presses do not do well moving things cold. They don't do that. They have to have hot, hot material and preferably larger billets. To give you an example, I have a 37-ton hydraulic press that, that is in the shop. I, I used to use it all the time for making pans. And if you put, I took a three inch diameter by eight inches long uh, cylinder, just a, well, it wasn't a cylinder, but a solid bit of rod. And I was able to put it under that press and squash that thing down to a half inch puck by like almost six inches in diameter. Just in one pressing, just straight down. Loved it, loved every minute. But from that stage on, it absolutely was terrible working with. From like half inch and under, 
it just it chilled the metal more than it did it move the metal for me the way that I anticipated that it should have done. Um, so presses hate thin material. They really love chomping through big, thick material. They're both separate tools in the shop. So if you're asking which one should you get first, my preference would be a power hammer, but that's not always a possibility depending on noise and other things in a shop, right? In a blacksmith shop. You may, you may live in suburbia and you're, you know, you know, the next door neighbor's china cabinet jiggling, going chilling, chilling, chilling. Every time you, that your power hammer strikes something may not be on the first of their to-do list, right? That every day or wanting to deal with. So a press can be better in that regard and more neighbor friendly. And certainly there's tons of people who have, you know, tons of presses out there. And I'm sure there's, I'm sure there's press enthusiasts that would totally argue the other way facts are facts you can argue however you like you know preference is preference so uh, it would be my preference a power hammer over a press generally but that's only because if I had to pick a tool if I can have both I will have both because there are two separate tools it's kind of like asking you know oh should I get a drill or should I get a wrench <laughs> they're two separate tools mm -hmm. right but like that that's what they are so Mm -hmm. They're not as far removed, but you guys get the point. Russell yeah. Niner says, any thoughts on a log splitter press? Any thoughts on those? I've considered building one before. There's about a billion videos out there on it. Uh, I, I've thought about building one out, you know, out of a cheap Harbor Freight electric one before. The main problem with all log splitter presses is this fact that you have got to do something to sturdy them up a lot. And I do mean a lot. Because a log splitter was initially designed to contact wood with a blade and push a blade through a soft material like wood and split. They were not designed to peg out and really do what their, what their thing is. You know, you'll see a log splitter, it'll say 60 ton. It's meant to put 60 tons of pressure on a knife edge, right? Like that's what it's meant to develop up. That doesn't mean that it was designed to hit a rock and produce 60 tons of pressure on the frame. That's not what it was designed for. So if it came in and you put a rock in between the blade and the pressing arm and you were to run that thing up, you're gonna blow some lines, you're gonna fracture some pieces. It was not designed for that. And so all log splitter presses um, just right off the gate, it's the logical thought like, oh, I'll just weld me a plate to the blade and I've got a press. Simple as that. That's actually very dangerous. You need to know what you're doing and you need to think about the pressures that are involved um, when you're talking about 60 tons or 27 tons or 10 tons even, right? A ton is 2,000 pounds of pressure. That's what they're talking about there is 2,000 pounds per square inch or PSI. And so when you're talking about a log splitter that's putting out 10 tons, that is a lot of pounds of pressure. What's that, 20,000, I think it is? Yes, it's 20,000 PSI on 10 tons, I believe so. 20,000, correct me if I'm wrong, Thomas. You're in the comment section. <laughs> Somebody can correct me if I'm wrong. But so that's putting out 20,000 PSI over a square inch of material. So that is a lot. That is a, that, that's an absurd amount of pressure. So when you put your little quarter inch bracing in there, you know, from quarter inch plate steel that has like a yield strength of 35,000 PSI per square inch, and you wonder why it buckles and your weld snap, well, that's why. Because you're pushing way too much pressure because you put a 40 ton, yeah, 20,000 you know, yeah, 20, pounds per square inch because you put because you put quarter inch plate on a 40, uh, on, a, on a 40 ton press, right? So that's why presses are one of those areas that I have not delved into in making because of safety concerns. That's, that's the main thing. You've got to know what you're doing. 
in my opinion you can build power hammers you can build your own grinders you can build a lot of different things but presses are one of those things if a piece comes off of there say you put the wrong bolt in it you you bolt something together you put the wrong bolt in it and it snaps and it sends that thing through your abdomen doing at, at 60,000 psi right you're dead man you're dead before you hit the ground so you know i i'd, I'd rather discourage people away from doing that obviously there's people out there that have made them there's people who use them i would say proceed with caution proceed with caution with those i had a scare on building my own press i had no business building a press hell i didn't even hardly know how to weld that good i'm still not the greatest welder in the world but i have done a lot of self-study and i have laid miles of bead on plate now miles upon miles of bead where I've gotten a lot better there, there there's a pretty weld and there's a penetrating weld and there is a difference in rods the type of rod you use the amperage settings you use the speed the, the feed rate that you go across the plate or your joint the type of joint triple pass right like you know there's all sorts of things that are out there when it comes to welding there's a lot of welders in the community here that I'm sure can attest to this there's so much more math and science that goes into why a weld is a good weld versus a bad weld than just oh hey I look I stack some dimes across there I stack some dimes with a little 180 amp uh, MIG welder with a friends of mine on a on a press I was building like a log splitter press I even had a log splitter ram and I had it welded up up top and because I didn't have any clue and wasn't paying attention to shear loads on the thing it broke loose and broke my collarbone so and it almost hit me in the face so if you can imagine that thing hit my face and it just basically it was pressing 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 it went BAM shot straight up like this and it was the falling weight of that ram coming down um, that it pivoted on its little joint there which was a bad design I, I changed that in later things but it came right down and it broke my collarbone and that was just the falling weight imagine if my face had been anywhere around it or if it decided to come out at me I'd been dead I wouldn't have been here to talk or tell anybody about anything right and so I had no business building a press I didn't even barely know how to weld I thought I did well, I was making pretty little dimes but th there's a big difference so if you're going to undertake building your own homemade press do so cautiously do so cautiously yep see matt kring says is the treadle hammer worth the investment so that can probably uh, best be answered by yeah. some of you out there who have purchased it who probably wants to hear it from <laughs> yeah uh, other than from the creator yeah so well but I'll, you know I'll, you I'll, I'll, I'll explain so i'll explain the treadle hammer um you know any treadle hammer can be worth it if you understand what a treadle hammer is for. A treadle hammer is to take and replace a striker in your shop. When you need that third hand uh, capabilities, when you need to punch something under, right? Like it's hard to hold that between your legs and hold the punch and pick up the hammer and slam the hammer on it and things move and walk around on you. That's where a treadle hammer is a beauty piece of equipment. If you're wanting a treadle hammer to be a power hammer and you want to take two and a half inch material, which by the way, most of the power hammers commercially available can't do two and a half inch material, but you want to take and draw out this big gigantic bar and you just want to, oh, you just want to look effortlessly like maybe you've seen Alex Steel do or whatever and it's just working this piece out like some Ang Yang. Eh, eh, nope. Treadle hammer is not your machine for that. Um, you're going to wear your hip joint out before you ever get the thing drawn out. So it may be able to functionally do it, but it's, go it's gonna wear you out. So keep in mind that a treadle hammer is a tool, like a drill, like a wrench, like a whatever. It, it, insert whatever X in there. A treadle hammer is a tool. It's a tool and it's designed for a very specific purpose. My personal treadle hammer kit, yeah, very worth it. Full air assisted treadle hammer kit, for 630 bucks, I think it is, on the website. Mm -hmm. All you have to do is bolt it together. All the engineering's been figured out for you, All everything, that you, you don't have any head scratching or anything like that that you have to do. You just have to provide a sledgehammer, a place to beat upon, which would be an anvil or a post or whatever you want to do there, right? 
and bolt it together. Boom, you're in business. And you bolt it together onto a two by four. So I would say a very good, very good investment. That was one of the interesting things at the uh, event. I don't, you're, you're looking at all these oh, comments. Oh yeah, yeah, I was I'll, just seeing what Thomas was saying. Yeah, I'll, I'll get around to the, I'll, I'll get around to the comments here in a second. Second, at the event, at the Central Virginia Blacksmiths Guild, so many people walked up when Thomas was operating the thing. It was, there was times where Thomas had more people <laughs> because we were right by each other. My event tent, then trailer, then Thomas. The trailer had all of our blacksmithing blanks on it, and then Thomas was over here while I was busy demonstrating, making this, you know, bur you know, French Baroque uh, cantus leaf scroll section. There was times that Thomas had more people around him than what I had around me watching him run this treadle hammer um, kit, and he was even getting little kids up there, you know, with their parents' permission, of course, you know. And letting them kind of pull, you know, and forge out some hooks and some things like that and have a play with it. And then, but there were so many people who walked up to Thomas and said, ah, that thing's not going to do anything. That's not, you know, what is that thing realistically going to do? And they walked away after putting their money where their mouth was, basically putting their foot where their mouth was. And they sat there and they played with it. And after it, they're like, you're a genius. That thing's amazing. Mm -hmm. That thing's running off. Because all we had, we had a small little three-gallon air compressor that puts off, I think it was like four CFM, four and a half cubic foot a minute of airflow. Like, just one step above Harbor Freight's little three-gallon air compressor they offer. Mm -hmm. Like, it's one mm -hmm. cubic foot a minute more than what the Harbor Freight... Um, you know, air compressor was. So mm -hmm. he was able to run the entire show on that air compressor. Yeah, it kicked on often, but it was able to keep up with a whole herd of people and a whole herd of children mm -hmm. playing on this treadle hammer. Mm -hmm. So if you can find better out there, you're more than welcome to mm -hmm. try. You won't. I designed this thing to perfection and that's the what and that's what it is. And I'm more than happy to stand by that. Mm -hmm. So, and it is perfection. Assume you don't put it up, like mount it upside down, and do other mm -hmm. goofy stuff because you think it'll be better. But that's neither here nor there. <laughs> I, I have seen some pictures of people putting stuff together. It's like you didn't look at the instructions, did you? <laughs> yes, we do have instructional links that we send oh. when you have purchased one. So if you've if you've gotten a treadle hammer kit recently and yeah. somehow didn't get those links, email us and we will send you the video links so that you can watch the instructional video on putting it together. Yep. And GWI Roro, hello. Mm -hmm. And who do? Welcome mm -hmm. to the blacksmith shop. Help. Mm -hmm. Welcome indeed. Chris Smith says I'm just getting into blacksmithing and you have helped me develop a lot of techniques to help me begin blacksmithing. Thank you for such a great instructional videos. You're very welcome. You're very welcome. I'm glad that they are helpful. Dave Sisti, will you be at Black Iron Days at Hartwick Pines? Hmm. Um, I hope to be able to go to that this year. We'll have to see uh, when that falls. Does anybody know when that falls? Oh, I, I, I don't like committing to saying, sure, I'll be there when I, I don't know exactly the, the, the dates. The nice thing is, is Hartwick Pines is not that far from me. So if I get a chance to go this year, I plan on going this year. Last year, I didn't, I didn't go to a lot of things, um, but I do hope to take and do, do that this year, do that event. Joshua Rivas says, I've got a bad heart. A treadle hammer and press can allow me to continue forging for many years. Yep, that's right. It will. Um, you know... One of, one of my favorite things about that, that treadle hammer is I like how you could set it up to sit. You can literally sit down and just with a tap of your foot, a toe tap, you're swinging an 8, 10, 12, 16 pound sledgehammer at your steel. It sure beats swinging a hand hammer at it. Can I move steel uh, very effectively with a hand hammer? Yes, I can, but I'm still a fairly healthy young man. But, you know, like today, feeling under the weather. I don't feel like, you know, I feel kind of like crumb. There was some other live streams. I've been struggling a lot with plantar fasciitis in my feet. Um, and, and that's been a real hard struggle for me here in recent months. And so I've done a few live streams where that's all I could do was just sit 
I was just sitting at on a stool and had a gas forge running because that was portable and close by and just sticking metal in and then just running and doing things under the treadle hammer. So I really like that aspect of it is you can set it up for to suit the work that you're doing versus if you buy a big commercially made power hammer, they're generally, I mean, they are what they are, right? Like if, if, if you buy a 500 pound Bradley strap hammer, you're not gonna be sitting at the booger. Right, you're gonna have to be standing. There, there's a certain kind of work. There's a certain amount of logistics and machinery you're gonna have to have to get in in your shop. By the way, I wish to have one. Like that would be great. I, I love Bradley strap hammers, but but there again, it's it's one of those things. Maybe not be handicap accessible. So, uh, High Desert Forge, what size sledgehammers fit in the treadle hammer kit? Hmm. Corey Shire wants to know what size uh, sledgehammer fits in the treadle hammer kit. Uh, so you can go up to 20 pounds in its current configuration. If you go over 20 pounds, you want to add an additional spring to, to the kit, which is as easy as you just snap it on another spring. Mm -hmm. Yep. Easy peasy. Um, there was also a question of how long it was going to be. Uh, yes. Uh, I think it was Somebody if you scrolled overseas, up. I think. Yeah. It said it was getting late. So... so Generally, our goal is to run the stream for about two hours, so until about eight p.m. Right? Yes. That's what mm -hmm. it is. Is, is what our is what our mm -hmm. thoughts are. Which from so. our time currently, that's about another hour and forty minutes. Yeah, but it's about we, an hour and forty. We minutes give away things the throughout the stream. Yep. So. Yep. So if you need to like check out for a little bit, take a small snooze and set an mm -hmm. alarm clock for twenty-five minutes and mm -hmm. recheck back in, you can do that as well. Jonathan says, you sound like an old man walking off, LOL. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I sound like an old man. That's because mm -hmm. I am an old man. I've done a lot of stupid stuff to my body in a short period of time. Jeff Barquette says, how long have you been blacksmithing and what got you started, Roy? Okay, so I've been blacksmithing for 15 years. Uh, what it got me started into it was I always had a fascination in it. And it wasn't until a date night that we had where we went mm -hmm. up to a historical village, because uh, that's the kind of guy I am. <laughs> Fancy. Uh, <laughs> we, <laughs> we went. We, yeah, we went. We went to a historical <laughs> village. Uh, at the time, it's just north, uh, northeast of Dayton, Ohio, where we used to live, um, called Carriage Hill Metro Park. And there was a blacksmith there, and I ended up spending like four and a half hours talking to the mm. guy during our date night. Uh, yeah, that was, was kind of bad. So anyways, that's kind of what got me into it. And then I talked relentlessly like you do for like six months after that, you know, mm -hmm. or four months solid anyhow mm -hmm. about this until she found me a forge at a garage sale mm -hmm. and that started the addiction. <laughs> and there we were. So, so serendipitous. Yep. So <laughs> serendipitous. So, yep. Dire Wolf Forge says, can you explain what you mean by the heavy hammer option, please? I didn't catch the context. Okay, Dire, dire Wolf For Forge, and he's a new member, right? Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, so the, the, the heavy hammer upgrade option will have a 40 pound head. So it will come to you as a fully fledged out, it'll already have, it'll have its ham, like the hammer handle, all that's built in one piece. And it will have an interchangeable die option that you can put inside of it. So it, that's the heavy hammer upgrade. It will also come with a special bracket because it will require about three springs to be able to pull it back up into the air and keep it balanced. So, uh, so it'll have a special bracket. It'll come with the additional springs, like new springs that are needed for it and everything that is required to make the upgrade. So it'll be a very simple upgrade. Basically, you'll take off your old spring You'll put this new bracket with springs on it and rehook your chain and basically bolt in your new heavy hammer option upgrade. So it's something that it's a modular thing that if you once it's available later down the road, you can just you can purchase just that item and add it to your hammer. You know, again, if it suits what you want it to do. So that's what it is. Steve Davidson, no. is it easy to switch between hammer weights for different projects? Uh, for well, on the treadle hammer, I would not say that it's that it's easy to 
switch between hammer weights. The, the nature of the treadle hammer kit, you have to bolt it together so it's a sandwich and it kind of sandwiches your sledgehammer handle. So you'll have to loosen all those bolts to pull the sledgehammer out to put a different sledgehammer in and then tighten all your bolts back. Uh, it is possible to do that with the hammer kind of all just sitting there uh, ready to go. You just loosen all your bolts, pull your old hammer out, put it back in, tighten up the four bolts um, or eight bolts that hold, uh, that wedge that thing together, retension them, and you're good to go. But it's not a very quick, it's not a slow, So it, it, it's, it's not a fast change option, but you can do that if you wanted to what go would, down to, you know, a five pound hammer or something. What like would that, be the so. other alternatives though to achieve the same? Like if you're, if you had a heavy hammer on there and you're trying mm -hmm. to get it to hit lightly, like what would you do to, so that, to make the change? You reduce the stroke of the hammer to where it doesn't come up as high. And what about, would you change so, the PSI too? Yeah, if and if you had the air upgrade, the air upgrade option, you would crank down your air compressor, uh, air compressor so it doesn't hit with as hard of a stroke. Mm -hmm. That's how you would do it. So, and also there was Hi Roy. Yes. Uh, Dakota Alliance, Hi Roy. Love the guillotine tool I bought off your site. Appreciate it big time. Very welcome, thank you. Bob's fathom welding. <laughs> it says Harbor Freight has a new 65 pound cast steel anvil that just came out Wednesday. Yep, yep. As soon as soon as my local Harbor Freight has it, I will be buying two of them. One to smash and one to reveal. So mm. because well, why not? I, I take hate for smashing anvils, but uh, mm -hmm. I've got some fancy anvils I plan on buying and smashing too as well. So um, why? Just so you know, right? People ask, might as well blow my money on it, right? <laughs> People want to, people, inquiring minds want to know, makes viral content. Why not? 3M Forge will be praying for you. What happened there? Uh, he says, um, I'm sorry I haven't been around much. I've been dealing with some issues with my kidneys and a divorce, but I've been mm. watching during dialysis. Thanks for keeping my dreams alive. God bless you both. God bless you, 3M Forge. Um, you take care of yourself, and yeah, we will add you to our prayer list. Um, to pray for you so thank you thank you for being here hopefully hopefully we um hopefully we brighten that day uh Gwil Gwilym dawson stanley says mm -hmm. what size anvil do you recommend for under the hammer don't some pe people like a certain ratio or something uh, uh under under the hammer i would say anything from like your Chayo anvils up. I Thomas at the event, he had a 20 pound little Chayo anvil underneath it and was working just fine underneath it. So, so you could probably get away with about that small. Obviously the larger your hammerhead is, the larger the weight of the hammerhead, the, the more you're gonna wanna think about adding more mass underneath that. It just resonates, it does more work. Um, so, you know, the larger the anvil or the larger the, the mass that you put underneath it, it could just be a heavy steel chunk. It could be a chunk of steel that you put under it. It doesn't have to be an anvil, but it could be just a big heavy steel chunk that you put under it. The more mass you put under the hammer, the more of the hitting energy, the kinetic energy of the blow is going to go into the piece, into the work piece, and less into moving your uh, anvil um, around. So, just something to say there. So, I would say 20 pounds and up would be good. Hello. Hello. I'm waiting Sorry. on you. Okay. So. Uh, Tragic <laughs> Visions one. Do you apprentice with? Did you apprentice with someone when you started? Not when I started. I started when I started blacksmithing. I started completely self-taught. Um, in fact, I was quite proud of, about that fact that I was a completely self-taught smith. Um, I did that for about three and a half years before I took an actual class with a blacksmith. Uh, I took a class with a guy by the name of Wayne Apgar over at Touchstone Center for Crafts. When I did that class, it was an eye opener for me that I was not as hot dog as I thought I was. <laughs> um, and there are Smiths out there, there are giants among us. And uh, I, I was rudely awakened <laughs> to that effect uh, by going to that class. And I learned tons, absolute loads. And then after that, I went back for a yearly class for the next six years to, to, to the um, Touchstone Center for Crafts, also went to Tunnel Mill, 
um, been to John C. Campbell Folk School uh, with Clay Spencer. I've taken classes from Tom Latinay. I apprenticed with Tom Latinay for two solid weeks. I interned with him for two extra different weeks on separate occasions. Um, and I've got to, got to be pretty good friends with Tom uh, back in the days uh, when I was doing that. And then I try to take continual education every year, at least do at least one class for myself. Not always do I get to do that, but I like to take about one to two classes a year for myself uh, to continue my education in the craft because it is impossible for any one smith to know it all or to do it all. So it's best, to, so it's always great to expand your creativity and stretch your limits and your bounds by going and learning people's different processes. Even if it's something that you can theoretically do by yourself, say your skill sets are good enough to just do it by yourself, you wouldn't really need some instruction, just being able to understand where someone else is coming from and, and apply their methods, you'll pick up little tips and techniques that will stick with you and go forward. So, so that uh, long-winded answer, I was not officially classically trained as a blacksmith where I went through some schooling and I got some degree and I, and I went through a whole route like that. Mine has come from the School of Hard Knocks and I've had to invest in my education by going to various classes uh, with different smiths. So, and I forgot Peter Ross in there too as well. Mm -hmm. I, I took a class with Peter Ross making crab locks. Hmm. Army Combat Medic says somebody needs to build a treadle hammer with the Molnir as the hammer. The <laughs> Molnir. <laughs> Funny you should say that the new 40 pound hammer head <laughs> actually looks kind of like that. So. <laughs> mm -hmm. Speargrass Forge says, admit it, Roy, you just get a kick out of stirring up the establishment by destroying anvils. I can hear the maniacal laugh from here when it happens. I do. <laughs> I giggle a lot. Like, you don't, like, you guys don't see it. I, I don't do it on camera because I would look <laughs> like a crazy person. But, but I giggle like a skinny little schoolgirl before I'm about to do a video like that because I'm like, oh, man, this is going to be bad. Oh, the comments, they're coming. You know, I can, I can just, I, I, I get, I get kind of a giggle out. In fact, there's a lot of videos that I have online that um, are kind of commentary. They're, they're commentary on, uh, let's just say you have to be a little bit of a brighter bulb to understand the joke, the, mm -hmm. the inside joke that I'm telling in some of my videos. So, because um, sarcasm doesn't read very well through camera lenses sometimes. But, no. But there are some humorous jokes I put out there um, for me personally and a few other people who get it. But yeah, mm -hmm. uh, when, it com when it comes down to that, like that all got started because plenty of people, the whole reviewing of Harbor Freight Anvils, it's not because I'm trying to make some big diet. I'm not trying to make some big statement that Harbor Freight has the best anvils in the world. That's not like not at all. I, I was simply rebuttaling the fact that a lot of times beginners get discouraged absolutely discouraged by our craft and disgusted because they go into an online group somewhere and they get berated about their simple tooling that they were just happy to receive something to even get a chance to go to blacksmithing for christmas right the wife didn't know what to get them you know, or the hubby, they're like, oh, you're into this smithing thing? What is that? Like, what do you, what do you, where can I find one of these things? $1,800, I'm not buying you an $1,800 thing. I don't know what you're talking about, right? <laughs> oh, look, Harbor Freight has them for, you know, 55 bucks or 60 bucks or whatever. And they get, they get an anvil, they don't know any better. They're like, sweet, I could, I've got an anvil now. I could go to smithing. And they go into these online forums and they say, hey, I'm one of you guys now. I, I'm, I'm excited to be here. And there's someone willing to just kick them square in the teeth and in the chops. And I absolutely hate that. It disgusts me in the trade when people do that. And so my whole commentary on that is to try to encourage others to just start. Don't matter what you're starting with. You could be starting with a rock on the end of a stick. If you want to be a blacksmith and you want to have fun in this craft, just do it. Get involved in it. Get started. If you ask, is my anvil the best anvil on the face of the earth? No. That's the hard truth of it, right? It's just the hard truth of it. No one's anvil is the best anvil on the face of the earth. They're tools. 
Some of them are better than others. Some of them will last longer than others. At the end of the day, it's a chunk of steel to beat upon. So that is, that's been my goal with any of the tooling videos that I've done. I know a lot of people dog on, dog and dunk on Vivor. Vivor is a chintzy company. company. They, are, they are the harbor freight of Amazon, right? <laughs> they are the harbor freight of online, okay? They're not producing the top quality products out there. That's just, they're not. But you're also not paying top quality prices. So the important thing is, is if you do get something, or if it's just complete junk, I'm going to tell you, so that way you don't waste your money on it. But if you have somebody out there and your loved one and they get you something nice like an anvil, this is a rant, by the way, this qualifies, qualifies as a Roy rant at this point. But if you have a loved one get you an anvil, you know, a, a, your sweet grandma decides to buy you a forge because they knew you were wanting one, the first thing you shouldn't do is go online and get your teeth kicked in by, by the hive mindset that everything has to be 40 million dollars and up or why do you even smith bro like i can't stay oh jock god i can't stand that i'm getting mm -hmm. flustered I'll, I'll quit on that comment section because ah, uh, it's just it's it's people of low iqity level that make those type comments and they gatekeep and i hate that i hate it with a passion i hate it with a passion so if you are a beginner all of my videos. I'm going to destroy some nice anvils or attempt to. I'm showing the difference. I'm getting the trolls all upset and angry. And you guys can have conversations amongst yourselves uh, when it comes to that. But the whole Harbor Freight one, destroying a Harbor Freight anvil, right? It's showing what things could do and showing the differences, right? A Vivor anvil, a Chayo anvil, it survived. Me and Thomas taking some big licks at it with a sledgehammer. Mm -hmm. I've had so many people tell tell uh, tell beginners that their little child anvil is a piece of garbage and it's going to break and it's not going to last. <laughs> now they can stuff it where the sun don't shine because guess what? There's video evidence now of it lasting. Two goobers with big sledgehammers mm -hmm. swinging for the fences on it. Oh, and it survived. In fact, the wood block broke in half underneath it. The stump we had it mounted to broke in half underneath it. And that little achayo is still in my shop. It's serviceable. It's perfectly serviceable. There's a few cracks in it where, you know, I chipped on the edge. But even the edge is still there. It didn't blow out a whole chunk and disappear. Like as some voices online would lead you to believe. Does that make it as good as a Holland? Heck no. But we're going to test it. We're going to test it. Yeah. Does it make it as good as some other Anvil brand on there? I don't know. Does anybody really test them? Does anybody test the good Anvil brands? Do they? They don't. I am. I will. There you go. Does it hold up? That's what I'll be doing coming up soon. So... So that's what it's about. It's about making a commentary that, you know, that anvils, you know, a tool's a tool. You should just get started in the blacksmithing. Stop worrying so much about whether this tool's going to last you until Methuselah gets a day older. Like, no, just get smithing. Make something. It's more important what you create off the anvil than the tools or what you make with the tools versus the tools themselves. There you go. Rant over. I'll shut up. <laughs> Jessica's like, dry it up, Roy. Come on, just out of here. So, yeah, <laughs> I don't know how people. I don't know what people were saying. They probably, they probably all spaced out there, huh? Um, I mean, yeah, people were just saying the anvils they started with or uh, yeah. ASOs. <laughs> but Yamez, thank you for the moustache. The moustache, thank you, Yamez. The moustache and black collars doing twenty more memberships. <laughs> oh man, thank you, black collar. I bless you, sir. Uh, Neil Lawson says, could you use a piece of railroad track as an anvil under the treadle hammer? Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Um, I will recommend I will re recommend if you're going to use a piece of railroad track to do everything you can to dampen the noise. Um, just the way a uh, railroad track is built, it has a lot of harmonics in it. So, you know, it'll be quite loud using that under the treadle hammer. You'll have a lot of ringing. So if you do use a piece of... A, 
a section railroad track underneath it. Think about that a little bit. Um, you know, maybe clamp some wood blocks to it, something to dampen um, the harmonics of that. But it should work out good. Keith Tenzing, Roy, I'm looking to get a touch mark made. Where should I look? What's that? Keith Tenzing wants to know where he could get a touch mark made. Uh, let's see here. I believe Thomas got my touch mark from uh, my okay. shop brand mark from Buckeye Engraving. So I will recommend them. It's held up pretty well so far to a lot of thumping. So I, I would recommend Buckeye Engraving on that. So mm -hmm. next, yes. Math. Matt Wyeth says the forge I started with was a baking tray with uh, clay cat litter lining. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, again, if it if it got you, if it got you, hopefully not actual cat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so scat in there in your cat litter, but <laughs> if it gets you started and gets you smithing good, if you if you want to know if your setup is acceptable to be in a professional situation, probably not. You'll you'll have to upgrade at some point. But that's that's irrelevant, you know. Get started. The amount of beginners, hell, even good, you know, so quote unquote good blacksmiths that I see that are, like actually can't hit a hit a nail on the head to save their life, you know, and missed hammer blows all over the face of an anvil is absurd. There's an absurd amount out there. It takes time, it takes practice, it takes time in the anvil to get good. And so if you got a junky anvil, you're like, oh, I dented the face all up. You were gonna dent the face up of a $5,000 anvil. That's just the truth. You're gonna, you're gonna destroy a perfectly good piece of equipment. So it's better you do it on a piece of junk, right? That mm -hmm. later on you'll have to hard face or do something with, right? Turn it into a door stop than for you to take and learn on some antique piece of anvil, you know, that won't be ever made again, you know, some 350 year old anvil, mm -hmm. right? It's better you learn how to dress anvil edges on something that costs 50 bucks that no one's gonna lose any sleep over if it got dropped to the bottom of the bay, right? Mm -hmm. Versus you taking and dressing anvil edges on some, you know, 15th century church windows anvil, mm -hmm. where you can't get that history back once you ground it away. So. Just some things to think about on that. Mm -hmm. Iron Ivy Forge says, I use an Atlas knife and tool knife anvil. Looking at the Harbor Freight anvil to have a longer horn. Can't wait to see your review. Awesome. Awesome. I plan on doing the review on it. I plan on testing it too. So Harbor Freight may not be happy with me. <laughs> I might, I might uh, kill the product line before I get they, Hopefully it's good. Otherwise, you know, I might kill the product line before they get started on it. <laughs> Homefront Forge says, I like that square anvil you worked on recently. Yeah, that's the Atlas Knife and Tool Anvil. Mm -hmm. So, yep. which brings us into a segue. <laughs> it does. Yeah. So, uh, the owner of Atlas Knife and Tool was kind enough to take and offer a 10% off uh, discount code that will run through April 1st. Uh, he sent me the uh, the original uh, knife maker's anvil there. That's the one without the horn. He sent me one of the, one of those to test out along with a gas forge, a knife maker's gas forge. So I'll have a review of the gas forge that will be coming up here soon. But he basically sent a 10% off coupon code for our community. So if you are looking in the market for an anvil and you want to get an additional price off of, of that anvil you saw in that video, now is a great time to take and do that. You can follow through the link in the description down below. Um, and if you type in that code CCI2023, uh, you can go check that out. Now, disclaimer, disclaimer time. The So just as a disclaimer, real quick, I am not being paid by Atlas Knife and Tool. There's no, there's no affiliation in that. I'm not getting paid for anybody who goes through that link at all. It's just a coupon code for the community. So mm -hmm. if you use it or don't, there's no sweat off my nose, but I just wanted to let you all know that. that you know, he wanted to do that as a kind gesture for the channel, so thank you. Charles, over at Atlas Knife and Tool. Greatly appreciate it. Next. Yes, <laughs> I don't know if I have any more. Oh. Um, I don't have any more as of yet. All right, well, I mean, there's a whole bunch over there that yes. people have been commenting, Jess. So. <laughs> uh, yes, I think it's a little side conversation. It's a little side conversation? Uh, okay. Joshua Rivas says, I decided to build a forge. I've built two now, a small soup can forge and a large three burner forge. I've mm -hmm. learned a lot. 
of course, now you can buy a nice forge for $100 or less. Yep. Yeah, and, and you know, and there's forges that can get you by. The Amazon forges that are out there, uh, there's a lot of cheap options out there. There's the Vivor options out there. There's the Happy Buy options. There's all these different, you know, Amazon kind, kind of forges and things out there. Some of them come with okay. Some of them come with okay materials. Some of them don't, um, you know they will get you by. When I first started into smithing, you weren't touching a gas forge for under $600. You weren't even coming close. And that was a used gas forge for $600. Like brand new, they were like two grand, like good luck, right? You, you, were, not, you were not getting in the gas forge game unless you were seriously moving some steel, pounding some steel. Um, in fact, coal forges were cheaper than, you know, finding finding just a basic hand crank coal forge was cheaper than finding a gas forge. So now there's all these great options and that that is out there. Um, so, you know, more power to it. Now I will say, now I will say I have seen some options out there. Um, I want to talk about this a little bit because it's been a bit of com controversy out there and I, I do believe that it's, it's necessary to state that. Not every item on Amazon is worth supporting. And I'll, I'll, I'll state it this way for a reason. There are some items out on Amazon. There are some forges and some anvils or swedge blocks and things like that that are out on, that are out on Amazon that are direct knockoffs of American companies. If you see those, don't support them. Yeah, you're gonna see a price yeah, it's cheaper than what you could buy it through the American-made company, right? You should support the creators that put their time and their effort into designing something and that are, you, you know, working their tails off to have a business here in America, not some foreign company that they just want to knock off someone else's genius or someone else's work. The most recent one was Holland Anvil Swedge Blocks. A company made the exact, and I do mean the exact, to the letter copy of one of their blocks, right? One of their swedge blocks. Why? They could have made any block. They could have made it any shape. They could have added any special sizes and made it their own thing and would have been just fine. But they took the extra time to not only rip off the design of Holland Anvil, but they took the extra time on top of that to steal my photographs, take screen grabs from my shop mm -hmm. of me using a Holland Anvil as their promotional material. So don't support people like that. Report people like that. Don't support them. Don't support their businesses or any of the other tools that they have on offer for you. That is my opinion of that, is knocking off direct knockoff work. I have had so many knockoffs of my, my, my designs and various things that I've offered over the years with no proper, you know, no even proper attribution or, or credit for, you know, coming up with it in the first place that it makes me sick when people do that. It, it's, it's a really, it's a, just a spat in the face, so to speak. So, but unlike an American company, that would try to knock off something I'm doing that I could sue into the ground, right? Sue them back into caveman times where they're going to have to take and heat their home with their own earwax, okay, when I'm done through with them. You can't do that to anything over that's in Asia or over in India because they just, boom, fold, and they open another company the next day that has the same products as before. And they're like, oh, well, we're different. You know, and they're not. They're not any different. So buyer beware when you're out there. And don't support companies that knock off other companies. Should. Yeah, it's kind of like with reviews, right? Like mm -hmm. you can use reviews to like vet how long a company's been around and if their product's yep. any good. Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, so just buyer beware out there. Eventually, I almost, I almost guarantee it. This is foreshadowing. Someone's going to try to knock off my treadle hammer kit. Again, better not be an American company, because I'll sue them into into next century. Like that, that like better not be an American company. Better not be out there some Jim Bob's garage. Otherwise, Jim Bob's garage is gonna get closed. But most likely, you know who it'll be? 
someone in India, mm-hmm. someone in China, they'll come out with a knockoff parody thing of mm-hmm. my treadle hammer kit. Guarantee it. Guarantee it. It's only a matter of time. So when something gets so popular and it makes so makes such a good impact, look at Harbor Freight. Theirs is just a repackaged to Chayo Anvil. I hate to tell everybody this. This is mm-hmm. their Doyle, you know, their Doyle Rules Anvil there. Mm-hmm. It's literally just a repackaged to Chayo. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's not hard. It's not rocket science from screen grabs. You can just look at it. It's like, oh, these things are similar. <laughs> one is blue, one is red. Thank God it's red. Thank God it's red. Uh, that's going to get a big plus in my book versus blue. Ugh. Blue. Sky blue. Who, ch- who chose that for equipment ever? Like, who, who was the guy? He should be shot. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> red. Much better. We'll just go with that. You know what? It was real nice. How about gray? Well, let's go back to machinery gray. That would, that would be real nice. But, uh, and, or black. Let's, you know, let's keep it professional. And these weird colors. So, anyways... That's my thing about that. That'll be the rant about that. But there's stuff like Atlas Knife and Tool. I went on I went on Amazon there the other day. And so Atlas Knife and Tool, I believe they have a gas forge. I want to say it's like 300 and some dollars, the one that I've got in my shop that's a knife maker's gas forge. You're buying it from Atlas Knife and Tool. Well, you know what? You go on Amazon, you find one for 158 bucks. And it is the exact, and I do mean exact, carbon copy. They didn't even try to change anything. Like, nothing about it is different. The exact dimensions, the exact everything that they're trying to do, but they're trying to knock off somebody else's work, somebody else's design work, somebody else's R&D time. They're skirting all of that, um, you know, and hoping that you won't know the difference, you know. And, and so they're suckering you. They're playing off of your stupidity and buying it and your cheapness. Well, I'll pay 158 bucks. I'm not going to pay 300 well, you just supported somebody who's going to steal other people's work. Mm-hmm. If you've never had your work stolen before, trust me, it's not a good feeling. Mm-hmm. You know. Uh, Daniel Crawford Man, says, <laughs> you I, are I need to on a chill roll. Out. I got too much caffeine going. Is that, what, is that what happened? You had coffee a little too late in the day? <laughs> the anger that's inside me is now making me feel better. It's like, you know, I like, Ugh, I'm on my last leg. Now let's fight. I'm ready to go. <laughs> the fight or flight. You're in the fight. Yeah, the fight or flight. So, uh, Crawford says that Atlas anvil is really nice and similar to a Sawyer's anvil. Yep, it is. Yep. Army soldier 1972 says, "Have you guys seen the Vivor Forge competing with Mr. Volcano?" Mm-hmm. Have I seen the Vivor Forge competing with Mr. Volcano? Um, I have. So yeah, I've seen that. Right. But I can't vouch for Mr. Volcano that it's a USA-based company. I've never had any contact with Mr. Volcano. They've never, re- they've never reached out. There's no face to their company. So for all we know, Mr. Volcano is a company from overseas as well. Don't know. Don't know. That's the thing about the internet, right? Um, they're like, oh, it's real popular. Let's offer something else, a cheaper line or our factory seconds on through a different a different avenue and that's why they're so similar right mm-hmm. so maybe they're offering factory seconds um i've seen vivor yeah i've seen vivor po- copy some po- popular brands um which not too excited about not too happy about um so again be be cautious of what you're buying and, and where you're buying i've done plenty of vivor reviews of tools because they've sent stuff to me they've wanted to send stuff to me they wanted a hard knocks you know review of it. And so you haven't, I've, you I, haven't so, been nice either. Yeah, I mean, you've been, been, you've been nice straightforward and they still yeah. want to send you stuff. So. Because I okay. don't pull, because I don't pull no pun- punches, you know, and there's been some stuff they've offered. Hey, how about this? I'm like, no, it's too close to somebody else's thing. I'm not doing that, you know? Mm-hmm. And so, you, you know, that's where it's at. What I would really like, what I'd really like, and this is a call out there to anybody who's in, in touch with American companies. You all need to step up your game. That's it. End of story time for you to come up into the 21st century step up your game start getting actual review units and paying and, and, and getting review units into youtubers hands like myself i'm gonna go and put myself out there first and foremost you know start getting your products out into review hands so this way people can actually see the difference send stuff out for testing right send things where people can see this on this platform 
because when I go to look up a new piece of camera equipment, you wanna know where I go first? Do you think I go to Amazon? Do you think I trust any of the reviews that are sitting on Amazon? Oh, heck no. I go and I, I look at YouTube. I go look at YouTube. If I wanna find out, if I wanna find out how to fix a lug nut on my vehicle, I go to YouTube. I go to YouTube and I look up for somebody who has a, has a review or has whatever it is of the thing that I'm looking for. So come up to 21st century standard American companies out there and stop letting the Chinese and the Indian companies out there take it, wipe the floor with you when it comes to marketing. Just stop it. It's so annoying. I'm not going to make some friends with this and I don't care. I just don't care. I'm not, I'm, I'm not in a place where I'm owned by anybody. I'm not brand loyal to anybody. I'm not. I'm human loyal. Are you a good, honest, hardworking individual? John at Blacksmith Supply, boom. He's a good, hardworking, honest individual. And so I can vet him and I can approve of him. And so therefore, I will, I will shout him out, right? Mm -hmm. I will, right? They're putting it out there. But if you're an American company out there, and you're throwing out the sauce because you're sad because, you know, Amazon, you know, because there's a billion Amazon reviews for Vivor. Well, start being the Vivor in the space. It doesn't kill you to take and give up an item mm -hmm. that you're trying to market and sell. The amount of money that we give away and just give away items every year. We give away over $20,000 in blacksmith tools every year. Yeah, $20,000 in blacksmith tools every year because that's going to segue us into doing some more giveaways here in a second, mm -hmm. right? So if we can do that, our community can do that, help fund that together, where the heck is the American-made companies? Why aren't you putting tools in my hands to test and, you know, in others like me online? Where are you at? Yeah, they're a little slow on the uptake. <laughs> yeah, so there you go. You can mention that out there to anybody. I don't mm -hmm. care, because again, I'm not owned by anybody. If this whole thing, newsflash, if this whole thing, 300,000, all collapse tomorrow, bye, Felicia. <laughs> like, that's it. Oh, well. Like, I mean, it was a fun ride. Like, I, I, I love every one of my community over there. I guess they'll have to follow me somewhere else, you know, or not at all. It's fine. Like, you know, there was a time where Roy didn't even have a cell phone. It wasn't even a thing for me. Flip phone, maybe? <laughs> I had a flip phone, and that was for work. Oh, yeah, the, uh, yeah. not Nokia, but... No, I didn't beep, own, beep. like, I didn't even own, I didn't own any technology mm -hmm. at all. <laughs> so, so, again, I can go back to just my silent rest in the woods. <laughs> just fine. Being a man of the North, they will tell, they will regale small children with stories of the man of the North, you know, mm -hmm. someday, and I'll go back to being a trapper and a hunter. I'll just go do that. Like, <laughs> and be hidden away. I'll be just fine. So I'm not owned by anybody, and that gives you an immense freedom um, to be able to take and do that, you know, and, and give out the honest to God reviews, and also to take and chastise companies and organizations that need it from time to time. Fingerswarm says the problem spans beyond blacksmith companies. Yep, yep, it sure does. It, it, it spans out to all sorts of different companies out there. But man, slow on the uptake. Mm -hmm. Slow on the uptake. <laughs> GWI Railroad, please stay just as you are, Roy. We need all the help we can get when it comes to tools. Thank you. <laughs> You're very welcome, GWI <laughs> Railroad. So <laughs> sometimes it's just not beneficial to me. You know, it's just uh, it's like one of those things. Man, I wish I. So sometimes it's like, man, I should chill out. You know, I should I should go and just sell out, take the money <laughs> and run. But Debaca. The least That's likable it. blacksmith on YouTube's, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> good <Yeah>. timing. <laughs> yeah, it's good timing, isn't it? So, mm -hmm. you know, least likable blacksmith on YouTube. I earn my shirts. Let's just say <laughs> that. I earn my shirts. <laughs> <laughs> Thomas was asking if you're drinking your his brother's coffee. Uh, no. <laughs> just uh, Just water with caffeine in it. <laughs> Caffeinated water. Oh, yeah, that is coffee. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not Fruity coffee. It's caffeinated fruity water. caffeinated water. 
Crackerjack801 says any update on the replacement for the discontinued Johnston's Paste Wax. Oh, okay. So the, uh, well, so the replacement for the Johnston's Paste Wax, I mentioned this at the uh, Central Virginia Blacksmith Guild, and I also mentioned it, I think in a live stream I did, of the, Previous uh, uh, of the mm -hmm. wax I was using. Um, I'm using this new product that hasn't been released yet, hasn't been launched yet by ZH Fabrications or Zach, uh, Zachary Herbolt, Herbolt's at ZH Fabrications. He does, he does have a YouTube channel, but he's m way more active over on Instagram for his social media stuff. But I was a beta tester of his stuff he's calling Zach's Wax or Black, uh, Blacksmith's Finish, I guess it is. And it's supposed to be chemically very similar to a, the Johnston's Paste Wax. So he's working with a chemical engineer to basically create a very similar uh, thing, but better. With better products, different ingredients that are supposed to make it better for ironwork or blacksmiths. Um, I really like it so far. Like, I really like it. I have some pieces that have sat in the rain, and they're not rusty. Um, now, granted, they have, it's been months. I'm leaving them in my shop where it's unprotected uh, from the weather, and I, I'm, I'm doing a beta test right now, checking it out to see its long-lasting capabilities. That's the main thing uh, I'm doing right now with it. But so far, so good. I like how it applies. It applies with a paintbrush, and... Uh, you can go on nice and super thin with it, and it puts off a really nice black finish. And so it could do either or. It can let some of the colors of your steel through, or you can blacken the finish out. Uh, so I am pl playing around with that still. And I'll let you know how it goes. Once he has it available, I'll sh certainly shout it out uh, and point people to it. It is pricey per tin, uh, as anything is when, you know, you don't have like billions of gallons of the stuff, right, that you can produce. So it is an artisanal thing, so it won't be for everybody. Um, you know, and I mean, I'll even say that for myself. I won't be buying a thousand tins of it. You know what I mean? Like that's, it's not within my price range to be able to do that. I will probably buy it for specialty purposes, just like I have wax or I have all the other various ways of coating stuff at different times. So, um, but yeah, yeah, it's going well so far. As soon as that's available, I'm sure I'll let people know about it. Do we want to give away some stuff now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. we could do that. So, all right, we've been up here nearly two hours. All right, wow. Time flies when you're having fun, huh? <laughs> it does, when you're ranting. <laughs> yeah, when you're ranting, so. Yep. Let's see, Neil John, uh, Neil Lawson said yeah. the Johnston's ain't cheap. Nope, BC it's not. says beeswax is food safe, but you go adding furniture wax and you are not. Exactly. Yeah, it's not a food safe wax. It's it's a different kind of wax. It'd be more for artisanal purposes, not for something that you'd throw on food for sure. All, All right. right. Do we want to give away some beeswax since we're talking about waxes? <laughs> Speaking of wax, let's give away some of Thomas's beeswax that he wants to give away. And we don't have an example of it, um, but Tom, we did coat this play button with the beeswax. So there, there mm -hmm. is that. We look insanely dark on the screen. Is that just me or is it because of the... Okay. Oh, we're not too bad. No, we're not too bad. Yeah, it's I was looking at it. It was just tilted away. It like, mm -hmm. looked like I was... All you could see was the top of my forehead, you yeah. know, because it's like the rest is all black. It's blending in, see? Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Yeah, I was going to say about that myself, too. It's like, ah, oh, it's too black. I do have a neck, people. It is there. It's just under a glorious beard. <laughs> the glorious oh. beard. You anyway, yeah, so Thomas has some beeswax he wants to give away, so we'll go ahead and give some of those away. Mm -hmm. Thomas, you'll have to comment how many of them you want us to go give away because I could just give away you. a bunch. <laughs> if we see his comment, we if, may not. If we see his comment, so... He'd be like, give a thousand of them away. I'll get started next week. <laughs> no, we won't be giving a thousand of them away. So we're going to go ahead and give away some, some bars of beeswax from Thomas. And uh, we'll just do three, huh? Okay, sounds good. We'll, we'll, do, we'll do a total of three. All right? Yep. And three, two, one. Who's our first winner, Jess? All right, Patrick Breslin with Beeswax. Patrick Breslin, congratulations. You're the winner of the first little bar of Beeswax there from Thomas Goodymoot. Let's go for the second one. All right. Are you good? Yep. And three, two, one. We're going to draw the second name. 
Who do we have? GWI Railroad with Beeswax. Hey, GWI Railroad. Congratulations. You'll be getting a little bar of beeswax from Thomas Goody Mood. Mm -hmm. I'll make sure he signs it. <laughs> Thanks, beeswax. Just adding extra work for him. <laughs> 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 All right. Let's go ahead and draw for the third for beeswax. How's that sound? Sounds good. All right. And three, two, one. Who do we have, Jess? Joshua Rivas with Get That Beeswax Out of My Ears. Joshua Rivas. You've got the beeswax out of your ears, sir. <laughs> and Coagulated into, into a little muffin tin and sent to you. <laughs> sent it's back Thomas. to you. Yeah. It's, it's actually Thomas. Thomas's ears wax, so, you know, <laughs> hey, it works. <laughs> Congratulations <laughs> to the winners of the beeswax. All right, we're going to give away some more sticker packs, and then we'll sure. go ahead and give away, um, I think, the tongs from... Uh, okay. Possum sausage. Sound good? Okay, that sounds good. He had said it's been like 20 minutes. He said, I gotta leave. Don't give away the tongs. <laughs> but then I don't know if he came back Hello. yet. So He'll have to comment back if he's back here. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and give away uh, some of our sticker packs. We got, what, two more yeah. sticker packs to give away? Mm -hmm. So we're gonna give away uh, two more sticker packs out there to lucky individuals. These both have our uh, year of the treadle hammer sticker, the coveted year of the treadle hammer sticker, and it also has the winner winner chicken dinner 100k sub sticker, limited mm -hmm. time special edition. Cute eyes with cute eyes, Roy. <laughs> <laughs> like everyone needs that in their shop. Look at that little fella, ain't he cute with his cute eyes? <laughs> Like this guy? Yeah, the original <laughs> drawing is actually a piece of paper that the mouth opened, like it unfolded. It was like a mouth, like, ah. Yeah, I had a big mouth in the drawing, too, so <laughs> it worked out pretty good. So, all right, so sticker me, please, sticker, please, sticker, sticker something in your comment. Ready? <laughs> I'm like, that's about to go weird, but okay. Sticker, Harley Newer. <laughs> Draw for something. Who do we have, Jess? Athol Ironworks with O Sticker. Athol Ironworks, O Stickers. You've been stuck, sir. <laughs> Get with us through the contact link. You know what to do in the description. And ready? Just draw for the last sticker pack okay. of the evening. Who do we have? We have a Jeff Killian with stickers, please. Jeff Killian, congratulations. You are getting some stickers there, good sir. Year of the Treadle Hammer and the Winner Winner Chicken Dinner Hunter K sticker. We'll have more of these to give away at next month's live stream as well. So if you didn't win a sticker pack, trust me, they will be part of this year's, this whole year's uh, giveaways until they are out and then they won't be reproduced anymore. Did you say we're doing play buttons next? Yeah, we can do some play buttons next if you like to do that. Sure. Well, originally what I was wanting to do was do Possum Sausage's uh, tongs, tongs okay. but I don't, know I don't know if he's back or not Possum yet. Sausage, are you still with us? Are you among the living and amongst the present? <laughs> we'll go back to that. Please comment down below if you are. <laughs> oh, and yes, somebody asked earlier That's if I have a poem tonight. I do have a poem. Yes, Jessica has a poem. She's good at that. Mm -hmm. She's got poems. <laughs> Poem time with Jessica. <laughs> Poetry. <laughs> we could do a video like that where like that's like once a week there's a poem with Jessica. Mm. And it could be like we could get like one of those high back chairs, a little oh, crackling oh, that fireplace. Would be fun. I would and like that. And now for poem time with Jessica. <laughs> and you can like have like the old librarian glasses. Oh, oh yeah. Let's me look here. With the little chains. <laughs> yes. I could sit in a robe, like a crush red <laughs> robe with a pipe. <laughs> We're both sitting by a crackling fire. Uh huh. Oh, yeah. dude, I like this plan. I like this oh, plan. Yep, he's it, back. Needs, it needs to happen. It needs to happen. <laughs> Do we want to go ahead and give away his talk since he's back? Uh, well, I had people comment play buttons, so maybe a few of those real quick. Okay. We okay, we'll do the play Thanks. buttons, mm -hmm. and then we'll give away some more play buttons, and then we'll go ahead and give away possum sausages, tongs. Okay, sounds good. And I promise they don't have anything on them that is made from possums or sausage. <laughs> yeah, he might be making big promises there. I don't uh, know. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> hey, you're receiving a free item from <laughs> other weirdos on the internet. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Choose lightly. <laughs> you're getting a play button from a pretty big weirdo on the internet. So congratulations. <laughs> all 
right, we're giving away some play buttons now. Right. We ready? Yep, ready. And three, two, one. Who's the first winner, Jess? Let's see here. 410 Forge Blacksmith, 100K button of play. Hey, there you go. <laughs> You've got a 100K button of play there, 410 Forge Blacksmith. Get with us through the contact email in the description. You know what to do. You know what to do. You ready? Mm -hmm. Sounds like little feet run. <laughs> it does. They're being chased by someone. Sound like someone big. <laughs> Who do we have? They we got tackled. We have VKG Hunter with play button. VKG Hunter, congratulations. You're a winner of a 100K subscriber play button from us. Get with us through the contact email in the description. You're starting to sound like Kyle off of Studio C. Is that what I sound like? <laughs> the, the sugar fed kid. <laughs> Caffeine's catching up. It is. Ready? Yeah. Draw for somebody else? Mm-hmm. Who do we have? We have Bob's Fab and Welding with Play Button. Bob's Fab and Welding. Congratulations, you winner of a 100K subscriber Play Button. Uh-oh, my pen's dying. Oh, her pen's dying. I may have to go grab another. It's no good. The rest of you are going to be ghost <laughs> names on a sheet. <laughs> yeah, I better go grab another one. It's out. Go, Jess, I go. I don't know. It looks like it has ink. Go, Jess, go. Here. Let me try this. Here. Let me rub it on some callus here. Oh. Did it work? Get the, the, uh, I don't know. I think she dried up. Okay. All See right. that? It's not, it's not working there, babe. I shall return shortly. Such high quality entertainment. <laughs> Comedy hour with Roy. Nope. It's dried up there, gorgeous. All right. And in fact, on closer inspection with the light, it's empty. Ah, okay. Hence the problem. Hence the problem. We don't need that pen anymore. Apparently not. The floor's a better place for it. <laughs> it's a completely oh, no. better place. Did you just find another broke pen? I did. We are the land of broke pens here. I never have Please enough send pen. help. Box of <laughs> pens. The pen. next guy, the, the, the next... Uh, ah! you, you know, the next person wants to okay. take and donate to the Don't channel, boxes of pens. That's what we need. <laughs> we are bad like, on pens around here. Also, like a case of 100 pens. Yeah. We are a high-class outfit around here, okay? Okay, Only this time the best I will test it before the I best. sit. How about that? Okay, <laughs> this one should work because it wrote. <laughs> it's red, but we'll go with it. <laughs> this is how we spend our YouTube millions, <laughs> hunting pens. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Bob's like, Fab and Welding, we gotcha. We gotcha. If you were like, why would we send this guy anything? <laughs> he needs some pens. <laughs> <laughs> Start there. They'll have names on them. Okay. <laughs> awesome sausage, you get what you wish for. <laughs> we're just going to have truckloads of pens yeah. show up out of nowhere. Right. <laughs> it's going to be bad. <laughs> they have to be fancy and resellable, though. I should I should preference that. <laughs> yes, dead pen giveaway. <laughs> you can have all the pens that died in our live streams. Yeah, yeah, yeah all the pens that have died in our live streams over the years. So. 3 a.m. for <laughs> For the pens. 5.50 Thank you. Canadian for pens. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> we will make sure that we get a pen, a proper writing pen, before the next live stream. Mm -hmm. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, world-class entertainment right here. Yeah, right. yeah, we're going big time to the top. <laughs> 2024, <laughs> year of the pen. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to the top, right? You know, 300k <laughs> subscribers, and we can't even get proper working pens around this mm. establishment. That's the way it works. Mm. Now it's going to bug me because it's written in two different colors. Oh. She's got a red pen. It's too late. I can't. She started it. with a blue pen. And now she has a red <laughs> pen. And I'm so she, <laughs> <laughs> I'm writing on a piece of paper that our printer decided to eat. Just yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're so high class. <laughs> it looks like it got snackish or something while I was preparing for the stream. <laughs> Send paper. <laughs> oh my goodness. It just looks terrible. <laughs> let's, let's, keep, let's keep it out of, I'll keep it out of the screen. <laughs> Send paper and pen. <laughs> Help. Like we should go for stone writing tablets, <laughs> a bit of charcoal or something. <laughs> she's, she's, <out> there. <laughs> she's like, look, look, guys. 
I was going to reprint it, but I didn't have time before the live stream, so I'm like, we'll run with it. Oh, Lord. <laughs> well, stationery is obviously <laughs> not on the top of our to-do list, especially not this evening. Oh, no. <laughs> Michael, we would love a handmade pen. That yes. That's terrific. Thank you. That sounds amazing. <laughs> we do have um, our mailing oh. address down in the description below. <laughs> Really <laughs> wants to send paper too, apparently, because we're out of stationery up here in the north. <laughs> we're just gonna get a box, yeah. like, well, undescript box. Like, what is this? It's It'll a skein like of paper. The postmaster a box will be of like, pens. all these packages came. It's in like for school you. supplies. Yeah. <laughs> Red Beard's Forge, thank you. <laughs> oh, good stuff. K. Derek Goodwin, oh, the man. frugal blacksmith. Yeah, I guess we yeah, should have Yeah, the frugal blacksmith. <laughs> we should have went with a different name, didn't we? It's like, yeah. I should be writing with some chunks of coal right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's worse because it's still in shock. <laughs> okay, I'm good. It's, it's, still, it's literally there. still in shock. <laughs> the half-eaten paper, half-eaten printer paper. Like, even the print is crooked. <laughs> like, look, like, look how bad you, the, the print is. The printer... Even the print is crooked. Went on the fritz when I was wow. putting it off. Well, it start, I heard it I crunching it. it. <laughs> I heard it crunching when I put it, when the went through the printer. And I'm like, I don't have time to tear open the printer and unjam the thing right now, so... <laughs> well, they don't have more pens, get the wood burn out. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Black Car. I greatly slabs. appreciate it. <laughs> oh, anyways. All right, where were we? Um, we're giving away another play button, yes, aren't we? Yes, I think we were. Okay, we're going to give away another play button. Now that our inadequacy <laughs> for st uh, stationery has been fully, I'll put out there it's for rough. the internet to see. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> let's go ahead and give away some more okay. little play buttons, okay? All right. Shall we? So, thank you all for the super chats and putting up with our nonsense. Ah, <laughs> oh, things you do live, right? Yes. Yeah, that's why you can't undo it when, no. you're, when you're live. <laughs> no, you can't undo this stream, that's for sure. <laughs> it's Yamas, who's probably got screen uh, recordings, too, of us. <laughs> oh, I'm sure he does. Uh, Yamas is really good at clipping that out and making gifts of things you know, uh -huh. that I'm not too proud of. All right, <laughs> are we ready? <laughs> yes. All right, we're going to take a poll for another play button here. All right. And three, two, one. Who do we have, Jess? We have a Russell Niner with um, play button lint yo. <laughs> Russell Niner. Russell Niner. Congratulations, you're a winner of a 100K play button. I said that in Hopefully the flattest voice ever. You should scroll to the bottom and make sure that there are people okay. are commenting there. Okay. Okay. There you go. Okay. All right, now, now, we got, now we got the updated list here. All right. All right, ready? Yeah. We're going to pull for yet another play button. All right. Three, two, one. Who do we have, Jess? We have Anvil and Fly Forge. Anvil and Fly Forge, congratulations. You're winner of one of our 100K subscriber play buttons. Congrats. Get with us through the contact email in the description. Mm -hmm. All right, should I do one more? Two more. Uh, I think I did 10 in total, right? More. I wanted to do 10 yeah. in total. Yeah. All right, so we got two more to do. So we're going to go ahead and pull those now. And three, two, one. Who do we have? We have Possum Sausage with Play Button for Jake. Hey, hey Play Button for Jake. So Whoever I Jake is, <laughs> congratulations. Win. You'll have to clue us in. Yeah. Possum Sausage. Possum Sausage, you'll be getting a Play Button. You can send it to Jake yourself. <laughs> yeah. How's that sound? I think we got Because last we'll be time. out of stationery and we won't be able to print labels, apparently. <laughs> mm. <laughs> All right. All right, we got one more play button. L last play button to give away for this stream. And three, two, one, go. Drum roll. Who do we have, Jess? Metal Man Productions with play button. Hey, Metal Man Productions, congratulations. Play button. You got it. You know what to do, sir. You've been around long enough. <laughs> Contact, email, description. Do it. Do it now. Do it. Oh, so oh. much fun. So, so much fun. We should probably, um, while the chat calms down for a minute, we should probably yeah. go over your upcoming workshops in Goshen. Yeah. I will let you do that. Oh, oh I am getting past the buck. Okay. While, I, while, while I go take <laughs> care of some business. Okay, you go take care of that business. <laughs> Hopefully they're stationary. <laughs> 
you might have to go on some outside. <laughs> go to commercial. We are going to commercial break. All right. I have some upcoming events to share with you all. Uh, let's see. Let me make sure my microphone is by my mouth so you can hear me good. There we go. Okay. Um, in just a very short time, uh, I think about a week now, well, uh, sorry, a week and a day, Roy will be doing a guillotine tool workshop in Goshen, Ohio. The date for that is going to be March 25th, which is a Saturday. And um, if you'd like to sign up for this, you can get in touch with Jamie Geyer. Uh, we have his phone number down in the description below. And also we have the link to the Goshen Historical Society School of Blacksmithing Facebook page. You can also get a hold of him there. Uh, so that'll just be a one day workshop where they're going to be building tools together, uh, welding them. So, you know, everybody gets to choose one to take home. And then of course, some are going to stay with the shop as well. It's going to be a fun time. It's going to be, uh, I believe Jamie said there's going to be a barbecue. So if you're in the area, consider coming for that. Also, the weekend of April 22nd and 23rd, Roy is going to be back down in that area of Ohio for two different things. On April 22nd, there is um, an event called The Gathering, and let me notate there, it's actually longer than just the 22nd, I believe it starts the 21st and goes through the 23rd, I think, uh, and it's called The Gathering, it's hosted by Bar Run Forge, he is over in, I think, Hillsboro, Ohio. And so he's basically having like a hammer in where you can come and hang out and there's going to be some open forging. So if you're in the area, you know, you can consider going, going to that as well. Um, I don't think there's a charge for that. I think he just asked for, uh, there might be like a registration form just so he knows, you know, how many people are coming. So the link for that is also down in the description as well. Um, and then lastly, the following day, which is going to be a Sunday, April 23rd, Roy is going to be doing an introduction to chasing. So that one's going to be a Sunday. It'll be an all day class in Goshen, Ohio and uh, at the Goshen Historical Society School of Blacksmithing. And Roy is going to teach you how to make your first set of chasing tools. And then uh, he will show you how to use them and you'll get to make a little sample project with that so if you're interested in learning chasing, that'll be a really great way to get into it and to get some hands-on instruction. So let us return. There we are. Uh, so yeah, those are the immediate um, events we have coming up in the approximately next, I think it's uh, about, about the next five weeks that we have coming up. So uh, again, if you're interested in learning more about any of those events, you can go down in the description. We also uh, keep an updated calendar of events on our website uh, that you can reach either by going to www.christcenterandironworks.com and then go under the blacksmithing section of our website. Uh, alternatively, the best, fastest way to get to our landing page that goes to multiple areas of uh, what we do is www.blacksmith.com pdfs.com. You've probably heard that a lot on the older videos. That's where we recommend people to go to find our digital downloads. Uh, that landing page will point you into a multitude of places. Uh, it's got our calendar of events on there. It has um, our digital downloads. It'll lead you to our blinks. It'll also take you to some merchandise we have. Um, ebooks. We have some ebooks as well to help you on with your blacksmithing and with your sales if you're wanting to sell your wares things like that. So I will uh, stop ran rambling now and see if there is any questions. No, not introducing to chafing, <laughs> chasing. <clears throat> yes, as in chasing uh, material, moving it, mm -hmm. manipulating it yep. to get um, deep grooves that are, look really cool. Yep. Mm -hmm. Bob's fab and welding. <clears throat> His comment there. Mm -hmm. you Copy that Bob's fab and welding. Okay, yes, I do know, um, I wrote that down, yes, it is 3AM Forge, so yeah, I'll forward that, forward that to him. Oh. I'll write that by his name. Bob's Fab and Welding right there, yeah. wants the play button to go to 3AM Forge. Okay, we will do that. Okay. 
Kyle Jones, right, go back. to the gathering. You can ask Troy to forge a knife. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he would be happy to. <laughs> or a sword. <laughs> no, thank you, Bob's Fab and Welding. That's awesome. Um, one of the things, one of the things that I love about our personal uh, smithing community here on on YouTube online um, is that we have, through the years, we've attracted some really kind people, really kind souls, genuine people. Um, and there's genuine people out there just about every craft, every every industry you can think of. There's genuine people out there. Uh, we have had the very fortunate pleasure, the blessing to be able to be surrounded by so many very genuine and good-hearted individuals. Uh, so, you know, we couldn't do it without you. And, and we thank you all very much for that. Um, you know, you, you see it in the comment section. You see people get together. They, they start chatting or, oh, hey, I'm over here. And, oh, yeah, well, hey, I'm right down the road. And let's get together sometime and forge and, you know, mm -hmm. things like that. And it, that's really cool to see uh, that that develop over time, and especially just out of a YouTube channel, right? Like, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, I never, I never start off trying to be the hub of anything necessarily or hub of information. I just start off wanting to put out, you know, tutorials on YouTube on blacksmithing mm. I was hoping I'd make some cash at it you know turns out I put out more <laughs> I give away more cash uh, I've given away more of my income on YouTube than I've ever made from YouTube and so therefore you, you know it's kind of like I don't want to call it a charity because it's not a charity sometimes charity can kind of have some negative connotations to it it's more um, or less kind of a flow yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's more of a revolving, uh, re revolving door effect. You know, it's yeah, it, a flow. I think that's a, that's a good way of saying it. You know, there's there's money, there's blessings that come in, and we're able to pour those blessings back out. And through being able to run the channel and it being supported by all you kind folks out there, and being funded, fan funded, largely by well, for like the whole whole time that we've been around for the last eight years, like that whole thing all going together allows this to be a thing, right? It allows this live stream to be a thing, it allows giveaways to be a thing, it allows people to get into the comments and be able to be exceedingly generous to other people that maybe they'll never meet in their whole entire life, right? But they see a need and they can take care of that need, right? You know, and, and like, I love that. I love that about our community. So thank you all for being part of our community. Speaking of that, Jess, we've been at it long enough. I'd, I'd like to know how many people we have online oh, here. Oh, yeah, sure. Go on over there. 101. So we have 101 concurrent viewers right now, according to our end. Mm -hmm. 103, actually. 103. You guys can let us know yeah. if there's more people or not <laughs> in this live stream. So, so at this time, I'd like to invite, before we give away the tongs, we're going to mm -hmm. give away the tongs okay. from Possum Sausage. Mm-hmm. I would like to invite anybody who's watching this stream who hasn't subscribed yet to subscribe to the channel. Put your bell on, set it for notifications. Come be part of this thing every time we do it. This is so much fun for us. It's as much fun for us as it is for a lot of the folks that tell us it's fun for them every single month that we do this. And we've been doing this now for, well, about seven years. We've been doing giveaway lives mm -hmm. and, and live streaming for about seven years. So almost as long as we've had the channel um, going. And my very first live stream I ever did was on my cell phone, late night, sitting in front of a, you know, sitting on my welding table. And, and like, oh, whoa, okay, there's people here. Hey, we're talking to people. And that started the community aspect for me on YouTube and you know that friendship and building friendships and some of you are OGs you've been here for a long time mm -hmm. long yeah. time since those since that very first stream mm -hmm. um, and hung out and we've been through ups and we've been through downs together and we've been through all sorts of craziness right and I plan on keeping that going no matter how big the channel gets so if you are new here tonight welcome to the blacksmithing community Welcome to our channel. Subscribe to get some more information, get some more knowledge on the subject of blacksmithing. That's what we are here for. 
Um, there's over 1,800 videos on the channel. So I would like to invite you to do that. Uh, I'm not everybody's cup of tea, and that's okay. If you decide you subscribe, and after you know a few weeks or a few days or maybe an hour or two of watching me, you decide I'm not your cup of tea, that's perfectly okay. Um, there's others out there amongst the smithing community that may be, and I'm okay with you going down those paths there. But just you, you know, get subscribed, get the bell on, and if you're also new here, shout out, say hello, let your presence be known. There's 100 people here, but there's maybe, maybe 25, 30 people in the chat, right? Mm -hmm. So out of the mass majority of you that are listening in in the background, some of you are at work, some of you are listening like a podcast. That's cool. I do that too to a lot of streams. Say hello every now and then. Make your face known or at least your screen name, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Let us know that you're there and, and you know we, we greatly appreciate that. You know, some people that they, they come to the stream and they specifically don't want to engage. You know, they don't want to mention that they're in the background watching. That's cool. You do that. But it's a fun community to come take a part of. And, you know, you never know when you might meet somebody in this community that happens to be your next door neighbor. Mm -hmm. That's watching, too. Mm -hmm. And you never would have known it. You know, they're they're right across the street from you and they have the same fascination about forging as you do. Mm -hmm. and you strike it up and do something crazy. And there's been all sorts of stories like that over the mm -hmm. years, right? Yeah, there has been. You know, find out that, oh, well, I'm subscribed, and this other dude's subscribed, and he literally lives right around the corner we from me <laughs> we in the same call to set, even, a few you know? So. Uh, yeah, a few of our subscribers actually turned out to be local people. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, <laughs> hello, everyone who is here, and hello, everyone who's new, and hello to all the old guard that's been here since day one thank you all so much for being here you make this stuff possible mm -hmm. are we ready we are we ready? yes we're gonna give away the tongs right yeah yeah and yeah i just wanted people to and show them yeah i just wanted to, i wanted to give everybody a chance to take and say hello to one another you know and things like that so mm -hmm. all righty so <clears throat> up now up now for this uh, great giveaway live stream here is the chain makers tongs made by possum sausage as you can see he sent us this nice little collage of pictures mm -hmm. or jessica made the collage <laughs> yeah jessica made <laughs> the collage the he sent us some photos so but he, <laughs> he took the effort to take some photos to show you how he made some chain maker tongs so we are excited that possum sausage uh, made those for us so we can give those away Thank you uh, so much for that, brother. Greatly appreciate it. Appreciate you and your family um, for sending those out to us so that, or, or sending them out to one lucky subscriber, rather. Mm -hmm. We ready? Yeah. All right. So have tongs somewhere in your comment, and we're going to draw one random lucky winner. And you will have to get with us within 24 hours with your contact email in the description. Right. So this way we can get you your tongs. Ready? Yep. Three, two, one. Go. How long can I go? You can drag it out really long. <laughs> Who do we have? Flock Hammer with tongs. Flock Hammer. Congratulations. Flock hammer. You are the winner of some possum sausage chain makers tongs. So be sure to get with us through the contact email down in the description. And we will get those sent out to you. Or possum sausage will otherwise. Metal Man, where can I find the email address? I am so embarrassed. Uh, so to find how you claim your prize, mm -hmm. um, so the top of your screen should look like you know the top box is us on the video. Yep. And just below that's a title, and then and there's just a little below that, downwards triangle. Yeah, there's like a I think it's like a half sentence and then a little triangle, and then or it'll say that. more on yeah. some devices. It'll just say more, and you click on more, and then that's the description box that drops down. Mm -hmm. Black Collar says, is there going to be an after the stream show? I don't know. How are you feeling about that, Jess? Um, the kids have been cooped up a little long. Oh, <laughs> so they okay. might, not, they okay. might not like that. Normally, we don't do two streams inside. Yeah. You know. So, so probably for this evening, there won't be a stream after the stream. Not for this particular one. But next live stream, we'll do our best to do a stream after the stream. Yes. Texas Taterbug says, I'd love to see your video on your take of the large butterfly that you sell. 
<clears throat> awesome. I do need to do that. I do need to make one. Um, I, I wanted to do one where uh, I take that take that idea and then I skeletonize it a little bit. Um, so I actually like cut out some windows and you know make a like a skeletonized design of that and form it. <clears throat> so I think that would be kind of cool to do or do some chased work with some texture in mm -hmm. with the chasing. It's kind of one of my ideas. So yes, I do need to make that. So thank you. Thank you for putting that on my radar. Chase Boyd, any suggestions on a good anvil to move up to from a Harbor Freight anvil that isn't crazy expensive? Um, so Chase Boyd, a uh, good anvil to move up to from a Harbor Freight anvil that isn't crazy expensive. The easiest answer I could say is right now is probably an Achayo. Um, that is probably your next logical progression, getting a small Achayo anvil to move up from the Harbor Freight anvil. Um, and it will be a fairly large move up or upgrade. From there, I would say that you'd probably want to take an upgrade to like more like a Holland anvil that that's out there. Those are good anvils. Um, there's a lot of other anvils. I have not gotten a chance to do them. Uh, you know, there's from NC Tool Company. There's a lot of different anvils out there. The NC Tool Company anvils, a lot of those are more like farrier based anvils. So, uh, but they're also fairly pricey. So once you start getting up into that price bracket, like Holland Anvil, all the prices kind of run together. They're within $100, a couple hundred bucks of each other. So it's really about the feature sets that you want at that point in time and less about the quality, if you get what I'm saying. So, you know, with Harbor Freight, with all the cheap anvils, there's the mix of the quality. You don't know whether you're going to get a really good, maybe you get kind of okay, some of them are better than others, right? in that quality bracket so in that price bracket there's a certain quality that's there and then once you get up into the price bracket where you have like the holland anvils and you have like peter old peter wrights and that kind of price bracket where you're starting to pay in upwards of you know six dollars a pound for your anvils you are getting into a different kind of quality bracket and therefore they all kind of run together i wouldn't i wouldn't put one as a front runner over another and the reason why I wouldn't put one in a front one or over the other is because the manufacturing, the R&D has been done to take and put out a top quality product across the board broad spectrum, but they different anvils offer different feature, feature sets. So if you were a farrier um, having the turning cams on like an NC tool company anvil or a place where you could pull out toe clips and things like that, those are all highly valuable as where... Um, you, you know, maybe you're not getting that with a standard London pattern, or maybe you want a German pattern because you have that extra double horn there and that fits you a little bit better. Or there's some anvils that have a little side shelf. Again, they're all going to be similarly priced, similar quality materials they're made from. They will all last you a lifetime. And so it's more just about a preference point at that, at that point once you go there. So I would say probably an upgrade from the Harbor Freight would be the Achayo anvil. I don't know yet about the Har the new Harbor Freight anvil, the Doyle anvil that they're offering, which is a red anvil, and it's very much just like an Achayo anvil, so I'm going to be testing that out and checking that out and letting you know uh, on, on that, whether that's any good to upgrade to that particular uh, anvil. So hopefully it is. Hopefully it's worth something. Maybe they're tired of me dunking on them <laughs> and bu busting up their anvils online for everybody to see getting millions this of views like on their those first, so what is this like their first new anvil in 25 years or something like that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep uh chris smith says have you ever had to build wrenches or mechanical tools build wrenches or mechanical tools no not really i mean i've made tools that are around blacksmithing for my for myself um, I don't really get into the things where I need to do a lot of machining or other. Most of the modern tools to use now, box in wrenches, things like that, they use some form of machining, and they're not just forged. Um, so I don't, I don't delve down those rays myself. George oh. Anderson says, "Hey, I just finished making a fan blown coal forge. The only issue I'm having is the fan that I got is too strong." I saw a video by Yamas on a motor controller. Do you have any recommendations, Roy? Yeah, the fan I got is too strong. Saw a video by Yamas on a motor controller, right? Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so if it's so if you've got a brand new fan and it's putting out too much airflow, the easiest thing you can do for that is to put in an air gate. A AC motor does not operate well when you start reducing the amount of electrical current that goes to it. You start um, by reducing the electrical current to an AC motor, you actually shorten its lifespan quite a bit. So DC is a much better, um, you know, is a much better option if you're going to have a variable speed situation for the blower motor. Beyond that, what you can do is you can stop it down with an air gate. So put a damper in front of it or put a damper in front of the inlet of the air opening and that will help slow down the amount of velocity airflow going into your fire pot. So those would be my suggestions for that. So, All right. Excuse me for a second. I'll be right back. All right. Oh. Let me find out if I have any additional material <laughs> while, uh, while he steps away. Let's see. Um, I think somebody had asked a little earlier if I had done any uh, enameling projects or anything earlier. And I have not done enameling uh, within the last month or so, but I have been working on some hammered uh, copper cross necklaces. And I'm gonna put out a video on that soon. Um, it's actually, what the video I'm putting out though actually isn't a new video, it's just a clipped up short of a previous video I did, but the crosses I've been working on have been of that type styling, so, yep. <clears throat> yes, Tabaka, they do have a cast steel anvil now at Harbor Freight. Uh, Roy seen that, and we got, we actually went yesterday to our local Harbor Freight and was uh, inquiring on that and they told us though that they were uh, not going to arrive till Monday on the truck so that's where we got uh, skunked out of already having it on hand. What did we get skunked out of? Oh uh, getting the Harbor Freight anvil yesterday when we went into town. Yeah <laughs> they said they have them in stock so <clears throat> Harbor Freight um, you really are garbage when it comes to things in stock or not. <laughs> Oh, the website that it did? <laughs> yeah, yeah, their, their website, however they do that for holding mm -hmm. their SKU numbers, you know. Mm -hmm. When you travel, f you know, 38 minutes one direction mm -hmm. because you were supposedly had two in stock and then mm -hmm. there is no two in stock when you get there. <laughs> Makes for some unhappy customers. Mm -hmm. So maybe don't call them in stock until they're actually in stock. Mm -hmm. That right. would be helpful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're hiding them. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, keep them away from Roy. Yeah, that's what it is. There was one that they had a display for their display model that hadn't been unboxed yet in the back room. I thought about it, like, I'm buying that one, whether you like it or not. But mm -hmm. no. <laughs> uh, let's see. Hi, Desert. Um, yeah, Any. so I have Possum Sausages Instagram linked in the description below and Thomas's. Just anybody who gives away anything, I try to put their contact info down there. So you can find him down there, just so you know. Yep. Robert, no, Robert Marthias is looking to take some classes. With me or with it's somebody? Just a general statement. Well, <laughs> go get to it. <laughs> take those classes. They're valuable. Mm. All right, babe. Mm? Do we want to give away a treadle hammer? Yep. Let's do that. We should give away a treadle hammer. It is the year of the treadle hammer, after all. So we should do that. How much for any treadle hammer kits? Yeah, yeah. The treadle hammer. In the meanwhile, while you guys warm up your fingers, yeah, we warm shall up your fingers. Tell you more about the treadle hammer. Yeah. So the treadle hammer kit that we're giving away in this year of the treadle hammer. I don't know, do you actually have the actual? Mm -hmm. There it is. Mm -hmm. There's actual imagery Fishy. of that awesome <laughs> treadle hammer there for you. So this is. Uh, my design, this is a treadle hammer that I've designed, and uh, you know, it can swing all the way up to a 20 pound sledgehammer. It's got a spring return, and it also has 
the ability to be upgraded with an air assist at a later date if you so choose. Uh, the kit that we're going to be giving away is the basic kit and it comes with everything you need besides the 2x4 to attach it to, the hammer and the anvil. So it's all the bracketing, all of the bolts and fittings and chain and you name it and it swings for the fences and I believe is a very wonderful design that's going to be changing the blacksmithing industry for many, many, many decades to come, hopefully. Eventually, hopefully it'll be so vetted it'll be on par with the Clay Spencer designs of treadle hammers and or, um, mm -hmm. you know, uh, not only his treadle hammer, but his tire hammer design mm -hmm. that they have as well. Mm -hmm. Believe it or not, that once w was not a vetted design mm -hmm. and people gave him a bunch of flack mm -hmm. and he is an mm -hmm. engineer. Mm -hmm for nasa oh yeah <laughs> he built the dude literally built rockets he's mm -hmm. a rocket engineer and sent them to space mm -hmm. and people gave him flack originally mm -hmm. for his design ah, the original work. trolls yeah yeah the original trolls mm -hmm. and now he's the most vetted and loved human being out there for, <laughs> <laughs> for his stuff so eventually when i'm old and gray it will be the box standard i'm sure mm -hmm. <laughs> or hopefully it will we'll see that's we'll just see. your hope your dream yeah it, it'll <laughs> prove itself out in that time frame mm -hmm. so plenty of people are talking about yep. the travel hammer so we're gonna have to see who wins yes. this one yep. um so this makes our what third that Fourth. is our, th our third this yep. is our third treadle hammer mm -hmm. kit that we've given away. We're giving mm -hmm. away a total of 12 of them this year. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, so yep, if you're two. interested in them, yep. you can find them over our website, www.blacksmithingblanks.com. Mm -hmm. Be sure to go check that out mm -hmm. for all your blacksmithing blank needs and more. It is mm -hmm. over there at our website that is ran by us. It's cut by Jess, I, and Thomas. We run the whole thing. That's the whole mm -hmm. kit and caboodle mm -hmm. right there. So you are buying American. You are buying from us, mm -hmm. from our company, from my shop directly. Mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. They are not produced anywhere else but in-house. Mm -hmm. So if you have a problem, you have any issues, you have things that you need to talk about, we're the people that you get to call. <laughs> Ain't that right, hon? That's it. This face. So, right this face. Uh, this a this. Yep. Uh, so, let's see. This right. is open to U.S. only, and you have to be uh, 18 or older to win. So, yep. That is our our rules for this. So yeah, I think everybody's thumbs are pretty warmed up. What would Everybody you say? excited? Yeah, yeah, I think they are. I'm excited. The big so. moment. Yep, the big <laughs> moment. All right, so we're gonna go and draw for it. All Three, right. two, one. Who do we have, Jess? All right, we have Gibron Gaming with Hammer. Gibron Gaming with Hammer. Congratulations. You are the winner of a Christ-centered Ironworks treadle hammer kit. <laughs> so, congratulations. And that was Gibron Gaming. You have mm -hmm. 24 hours, good sir, to contact us through the email in the description of this video mm -hmm. to claim your prize. Congratulations, Gibron Gaming. <laughs> So many, so many, so many more comments. cameras, so, so many more comments, so many more comments. So, yeah, so, so to, to put it out there again, you know, for the treadle hammer, I'm, I'm glad to give these away for the year. I'm glad for the things that will be coming up um, this year as far as sponsorships and things of the channel and people donating things and items to the, you know, giveaway lives, stuff like that. I'm super excited for, you know, working with some of the newer brands and things that are trying to reach out. And I, I'm hoping that this will actually, that this will continue and it will continue to be this um, fan funded thing. And, you know, maybe we can get some help with some of the big guys out there that are, you know, that, that are some of the bigger brands, they help fund this thing and we can, you know, keep this whole thing rolling. I would like to do um, the year of every year and include something else that is one of those pieces of equipment that you just can't readily get out and buy and sometimes where it might take you a few paychecks to afford. That's it's really where I want that year of to go. I could do things like year of the punch, you know, mm. I could do simple items, um, but I really want to be able to be that hub and be that center of being able to say, hey, 
here's where you can re receive some of them premium tools. You know, here's where you have a chance at winning, and everybody has a chance. Everybody has the same amount of opportunity, and, and I, I like being able to do that. And I just want to ramp it up every year. Mm -hmm. You know, that's my whole my my whole goal. Eventually, I want to be able to give away full blacksmith shops, like entire kits, and mm -hmm. just be able to like the whole thing, forge, anvil, post vice, like the whole thing, right? Where it's a whole it's a whole ordeal, and uh, you know. I just like doing stuff like that. I like the excitement. I like seeing new Smiths get started. I like being able to be that be that change that someday some Smith out there is going to be able to say, hey, I wouldn't be here now unless somebody helped me out there. You know, and that's such a cool, that's such a cool thought to me. I really like that. And believe it or not, I'll digress here a little bit. So congratulations to all the winners. I'm going to digress into this just a little bit. I want to dig a little bit more mm -hmm. into the emotions and, and and the thought process behind these giveaways and these things. Believe it or not, you have just as much potential impact as this channel does. Um, it doesn't matter the cloud of having 300,000 subs. That's, that's just new. We've been doing these since I only had, you know, 30 people show up less than that I had three people show up for my first one right like we've been giving away we've been giving away tools and things we've made and you know meaningful little items and knickknacks and things like that we've been doing this since before the channel was he ever even you know financially soluble at all right so we've been operating at a loss for a great many years this year is the only year that's finally has come around to where you know but we might actually operate at somewhat of a profit or at least be in the black, you know, dead even, neutral. And so when, we, when you look at that, that may, that may sound all big and it may sound impressive, but you have equally, the, you have the same amount of opportunity to bless someone in your local community. You wouldn't believe how much that rusty pair of tongs that you have that you don't use anymore can really help out a starting smith. You, you, you just, you know, you, you know, you really can't believe it, like how, how much impact that can have, right? Mm -hmm. It can, it could just have it. You know, if, if you see a guy and he's out and he's thumping around on this most ugly looking anvil or, you know, maybe it's not even an anvil, maybe it's just some, you know, maybe you know a kid in your local group, and he, you know, he's smacking around on a sledgehammer head stuck in the dirt. Think about the, you know, think about how big of an impact you could have on that kid's life, whoever they may be, if you gave them your Harbor Freight anvil, or you gave them some some of your old tooling when you upgrade and you're out of them, right? Mm -hmm. Think about that. It could be huge. You could have just made the next Samuel Yellen. You really could. Mm -hmm. You could be making that. That you could be making that next ultra uber master smith someday, and you had that ability to do that for just very simple tooling. Because we are all on different levels, and we all have a part to play in this big old game. And we could take it, and we all have something to offer, and we all have something to give. Uh, that, that we can do. And so I'd like to encourage you all out there, whether it be you give of your time, you give of your experience, you give up, you, you give of your personal finance, or you give of your old cruddy tooling that you don't care about anymore. Do something to change somebody else's life in your immediate circle, and the world's going to be a much better place for it. And you will be a much happier person for it. And I have found that to be true here on the channel. So thank you, everybody, who has been part of this channel and part of this ride and keeping this whole nougaty center, the center of this hub spinning, um, you know, out there because these giveaways wouldn't be possible without it. So, mm -hmm. yep. What you think in there? Did you oh, have something you had to I, address? Oh, I was just checking. Thomas says he accidentally uh, knocked it off, but um, it was just a member chat that said congrats to all the winners and thank you okay well sorry thomas mm -hmm. easy on the trigger finger there buddy <laughs> <laughs> but yeah we're good and yeah possum yeah. sausage i added you as a moderator so you're good in future mm -hmm. live streams if you'd just like to have your email included directly down there we can do that too yep yep 
we yeah. should probably do that. That way it's just yeah. there, and that way they can get in touch that way. Mm -hmm. Yep, that'd probably be good. Yep. So, yeah, looks like he's got it squared away. Uh, down under Farm and Forge, I emailed you today or yesterday. Mm -hmm. So if you haven't seen it, maybe it got blocked. So email us. Yep. It should have went through, unless it's should've. in the spam folder. It could be, yeah, yeah. Bob's Fab and Welding. Don't get with us. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> yep, very welcome. Just to say, I tried out my forge today. God bless y'all. Benny Hill, that's awesome. God bless you as well. Um, I will say this about uh, emails. I, I want to talk about that real quick. It brings up a, mm -hmm. brings up a good point. If you don't hear, so if you don't hear something back from me, I'm a very, um, how do I want to say, I, I, I don't want to sound arrogant in the least bit. You have I, more demands on your time I, than what you have time I, I for. Have, yeah, I have more demands on my time than I actually reasonably have time for. So, so if you email me something and you don't get a direct response and it, maybe it's been sitting there a week, it's probably went to the bottom of the pile and I don't even remember it anymore that I even need to get back to it. So just email again. Um, I don't want to say like, oh, just spam me every hour of the day because that won't mm -hmm. work. But like, just, you know, again, like professionally, like, hey, reaching out again, I did this or that, what have you. And that way we can get a hold of those because our email inbox is insane. Uh, mm -hmm. Like it's, yep. It's insane. Mm -hmm. We love to connect with everybody, but we have people who want to ask us crazy off the wall things that we've already made videos on, you know, mm -hmm. all the way to business inquiries to people who, um, you know, just want to reach out and tell us their story and saying, hey, thanks for this or that. Like, we love those type of emails and we do read them. Not always are we good enough about replying to them, you know, mm -hmm. especially if they're 14 pages long uh, of stuff. It's like, cool <laughs> mm -hmm. i don't have an hour and a half to go through the whole email and and go item by item and say you, you know saying like i just thank you for all of it but you know our time is limited when it comes to emails unfortunately so mm -hmm. so if you if you've emailed us and you didn't get a word back please email us again and kind of just keep ringing our doorbell so to speak you know until, until we answer that way we can get back with you we've had a few people that get really upset at us out of nowhere, Phil, because like, well, I emailed them six months ago and then they never answered me. It's like, you're one of 4,000, one of 4,000 emails. So we may have looked at it. We we're like, oh, I was going to do that and get pulled away at something else. And then it's gone. It's, it's lost. And I am absolutely super terrible and I'm super hard to get a hold of. Um, just because I, I delegate emails to Jessica. <laughs> I delegate. So if it's technical, I don't know. Yeah, so if it's <laughs> technical, doesn't know she doesn't know. Burners. But, but you know, <laughs> I'll have people ask me lots of technical questions. And again, this is something that I can handle in a, maybe a video. I can, I can handle in a YouTube video maybe and put out there. Uh, but as far as me spending an hour writing back out a really technical, detailed email, that's probably not going to happen. I have more demands on my time than uh, than what I have time for. So uh, again, not, you know, Darren, uh, definitely get with us. Um, you know, I, I, want, I want to get back with you for sure, for mm -hmm. sure. So the email's gotten missed somewhere and I feel completely bad about that. Mm -hmm. But I am a terrible person for email and I'm a terrible person for uh, communication. I, I don't do well. <laughs> I don't do well at that. Trying to keep up with everything and keep keep moving forward is sometimes enough on this old brain nugget of mine. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's enough to just keep up with everything. So if you haven't heard from us, please email us again and, being, again and again and again and again until eventually <laughs> we answer and then we will. Now that being you know, said, with, you, yeah. with the giveaway stuff, I will email you back tonight. If you've sent an email with your address, I will yep. at least say, you know, got it, thanks. So that way you do know yeah. that we got that because we do like to have all of our giveaway stuff you know, all of our giveaway yep. contacts by the end of the weekend. Hence, so we can ship stuff out hence why we also want it done in 24 hours. So this way it's fresh on mine. We can get right after it. Um, you know, we can get it while it's done. We get it done while it's fresh on mine and, and we can get it out there and get after it. 
uh, when someone's emailing us, you know, eight months from now saying, oh, I think I won something, you lost your chance, you know, or in a two, mm -hmm. three days, you're one of, you know, 12,000 emails. So we're not even, we're just not going to deal with you at that point. So, mm -hmm. because then we have to hunt you up, right? We got to find out, wait a minute, where was that? Who was that? When was this? And, and it becomes too much. So, mm -hmm. and I'm not the type, I don't want it to go to where there's just a fake answering service. Yeah, where right. you know you're not getting a hold of us anymore you're just getting a hold of some rando person in another country that's mm -hmm. you know filtering our calls and filtering our, our things so i want to stay as closely connected to the community as we can especially going forward <laughs> possum sausage you're good <laughs> i think i've got your email like 10 times in our yeah in our we're inbox, good so you're set kyle jones awesome yeah we love some some maple syrup that'd be yep. that'd be cool and uh clip point bushcraft awesome liter i literally just got my play button in from your last live stream awesome so glad that you could be part of that and have that i'll see that was tim o'connor uh that was him that said congrats to all the winners and his comment accidentally got hidden okay so <laughs> thank you tim o'connor sorry the comment got hidden by accident apple ironworks thinks says <clears throat> thank you Thank you for the videos and what you guys do. Excuse You're me. You're very welcome. <clears throat> Frog in the throat. Mm -hmm. uh, Harold Hoskison says, one more time, what do we do to see perks for members on products? So in order to see your member perks, to get your discounts and all that, what you want to do is you want to click on Roy's smiling face, the icon for our channel. Mm -hmm. And uh, when you when you do that, it'll take you kind of to like our, our YouTube landing area. Yep. And up at the top, there will be uh, a couple different categories, and one of them will say membership. And when you click on that, then all the member posts will be in there, including the discount codes. So I think it would be really good, Jess, since mm -hmm. we've had like since we've had this. Mm -hmm. um, I think it would be really good if we do an FAQ mm -hmm. about memberships, where to find oh, yeah. with screen records. So this mm -hmm. way we can reference that video, and our and and our subscribers can reference that video in the future yeah yeah that gotcha. that way they could be like oh, okay where do i go and then we might have to update that several times as we go because if yeah YouTube because changes youtube the, changes stuff you know well, that's that, the problem with doing a video like that is because you you know youtube changes things so sometimes they're like oh it was over here but now it's over here and we didn't tell anybody we were going to change it so yeah you know. if i mean i could always screen or i could always screen show it right now you're very welcome there possum sausage very welcome <laughs> Do you want to try to take and show that to them right now? Yeah. So, let me so for the membership, Jessica's going to take and uh, do a real quick screen recording, I guess, or show I'll, I where to go. I will in a second. I'm going to make sure I can pull up yeah. the page. So she's, go so she's going to try to pull up the page and then like show you where you can go to take a look at memberships. Um, it may be slightly different for mobile. Uh, so, you know, just keep that in mind. But we'll try to do a better job on that um, in the future, take and show off that. So mm -hmm. let's go to your channel mm -hmm. all right all right are you going to yeah, share I that i guess this will be the well i'm making sure so it's under I, community it's a community nope it'd be under membership oh yeah you're right probably yeah the, yeah the community is open to everybody so yeah okay this is yeah if i don't scroll down uh, yeah okay can't scroll down but there we go all right <coughs> oh, oh. This may not be the greatest idea. Let's try it, though. Yeah, uh, I don't know. Don't it's know. Okay. Oh, try it. Okay, it's not linked so right now. I is it not to, linked? Yeah, my, okay. my screen's not set up for it. So. Well, let's go back to regular before we <laughs> overload the system. Before we do something crazy. Oh. All right, Jessica will figure will that. Jessica will figure that out, and we will do like a whole screen record video where she'll walk mm -hmm. through you, walk you through those steps. Um, that way, everybody can you know be in good shape there. And Possum Sausage, thank you for the ten dollars super chat. I did see you. Um, I'm glad to take and help you in your smithing journey. Thank you for being a constant supporter. So. Uh, okay, Michael. <laughs> Michael wants to send us a pen. Yeah, that's right. Yes. Um, you can also find our, our address, anybody who's wanting to send us anything. We also have our P.O. box, I believe, in every mm -hmm. single video, but also specifically the live streams. I know it's down there. If you press the little down triangle, it's mm -hmm. down at, like, the very, towards the very bottom. <laughs> <laughs> It's dark. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it was, dark it in there. Ready to do it. It's dark <laughs> in there. So, I wanted to look at that real quick, just as a fun one. 
put that away. I was having a had it open to a potential fly press. I'm interested in getting in <laughs> a 20 ton fly press. Oh, so you might you yeah. might have somebody nab it from you. Yeah, I'm not. That's why I'm not saying. <laughs> okay. That's not. That's why I'm not saying where it's at right now. I don't want anybody to nab it from me. Yeah. So all right, let me see here. Let me let me try to find. Uh, wanted to see what our what the stats were up to, which mm -hmm. is insane. So right now we're sitting at uh, 318,134 subscribers. That is insane. Mm -hmm. That is insane. Thank you all for subscribing, for everybody who's done that. So yeah, we had an uptick of 209,300 subscribers in the last 28 days. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's crazy. It doesn't even seem right. Oh, you could show it. It doesn't even your, seem right. So show them from, you might be able to show them. No, from I won't phone. be able to show them from my phone. Oh, okay. Yeah, I guess the screen would like, show. Yeah, I'm already signed into it. You have to do it from a third party. Yeah. So it's like as if you wanted to be a member, yeah, you'll have to I click gotcha. from your end. Otherwise, it's just going to show our end mm -hmm. of the membership thing. See? Gotcha. Steven, <laughs> Steven Parsons. Parsons. Uh, Roy, I want my box of borax. <laughs> it's in the mail along with the check. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, yeah. So 1.4 million watch time hours and plus 209,000. 300 subscribers in the last uh 28 days and that one video is insane it's gotten about 118 million views mm -hmm. one short got 118 million views that's insane crazy and no i'm not showing anybody where that 20 ton fly press is i'm mm -hmm. keeping it to myself <laughs> until i decide i don't need it then i will mention it then i could mention it so yeah, superstar. That's insane, huh? Robert Lana says, Thomas gets a bigger fly press than you, and you're shopping for fly presses. <laughs> <laughs> He's yeah. always got his eye on fly presses now. He's going to start a yeah. museum of fly presses, of like 50 fly presses. Yeah. <laughs> I am a big fan, and maybe I shouldn't say this, <laughs> but I'm a big fan of fly presses now. I, they were always on my peripherals. They were always like, hmm. Fly press, no fly press. Fly press, no fly press. I don't know if they're any good, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, eh, they seem like they could be kind of gimmicky. They're not a hydraulic press, you know? And anytime I've seen anybody do anything with them, yeah, they seem like they did some pressing, but they didn't look like they did that much work. They, like, they didn't look like they were getting that much work done with it on video. Because sometimes it's hard to take and convey that. Then I've gotten one. I'm like, well, I'll take a chance. I get one. I love that thing. Mm -hmm. I love my fly press. I was straightening three quarter inch um, round bar, uh, mild steel round bar cold that was all bent up and curved and having some real big kinks in it. And I was straightening that and flattening it. And that press didn't even care. My little, my number six fly press did not even care that that steel was underneath it. It was flattening it and leaving little flats on it everywhere it bit <laughs> on that round bar. So, you know, you do it hot, like you can bend really thick material with a fly press, like hot or cold. You can bend some really thick material and, and just it's amazing what you can do with a fly press that's mechanical in nature. That's what I'm so super excited about um, being sponsored by this year blacksmith supply um i'm super excited about that with the little fly press that i got that i picked up from john it's it's a number two so it's a two ton fly press but the whole thing's so cute it's so cute i had a little sneak peek so you know I, ha I had to i had to have a little sneak peek you know thomas couldn't wait he's like a kid on christmas he couldn't wait to look at his until we did an official unboxing video of it so i had a little sneak peek on you know, just make sure everything was in good shape good working order it's so cute they're like it would fit on this table like like this it's like literally like that wide and it's maybe like that tall you know mm. with this little flywheel on there i'm like oh it's a wee baby it's gonna make me so happy because i'm gonna put little tiny tools in it i'm gonna use little tiny tools to do chasing work and it's gonna be excellent excellent for the purposes that i have it in mind for uh so i can't so you know yeah, can't thank John enough for that. That's going to be awesome. Can't wait to make some projects, some really killer projects with that in my number six fly press. And then, you know, Thomas, he's he got the number five fly, fly press. So I plan on reviewing that and taking a look at that and going hardcore on that as well. we got to build stands for him. 
That one will go to Thomas's shop, obviously, because it's Thomas's. Mm -hmm. After I'm done doing a couple little comparison testing videos with it, and then I'm still on the hunt for a 20 ton or, and or a 60 ton fly press. So I would like a 60 ton fly press. I just don't like 60 ton fly press prices right now. Mm -hmm. So, you know, um, and I have my own purposes for those. So, mm -hmm. you know, multi stage dies and things like that. They're just you can put a lot of squish on things. Mm -hmm. Yep. It's nice. It's nice. <laughs> Metal Man Productions. That's the last thing you want to hear about your press. So cute. LOL. <laughs> <laughs> it's so cute. It's got little baby tunes. <laughs> little baby. Little baby handle. <laughs> little bit. It's going to be great, though. It's going to be great for what it's meant for. So. Mm -hmm. Yep. What's up there, girl? Thomas says he's like a kid in the shop. <laughs> yeah, he is. He is like a little kid in the shop. Sometimes I just like settle down, just settle down. <laughs> no, but no, it works out good. So yeah, so we got some stands to build for it. I plan on uh, building out some uh, the fly press stands for them, doing a video on that, and again around tooling and a whole bunch of other fun stuff. Uh, it, it's going to be fun in the shop. So I, I'm glad to have it. Glad to have it in the shop. Still looking for a big, uh, you know, a really big press for, for those. 20 ton would get it done. 60 ton, because why not? It's like as big as you go with a fly press. The only thing that gets bigger than that is, and I, I would trade them in a heartbeat, for a friction screw press. Mm -hmm. A good 60 ton friction screw press. Oh, that would be great. That would be great. For production work. <laughs> For Roy's purposes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Somebody asked if the dye was blue on it. No. <laughs> it is not blue at all. Oh, you're going to leave that secret. So I have to watch the video. Yeah. Yep, yep. <laughs> uh, I've used my fly press, my number six, Thomas I, for like installing bearings and pushing out bearings for the plasma table. Uh, every now and then there are uh, the linear bearings it uses. Uh, they'll go kaputs. And then we'll use, excuse me, we'll use the fly press to not only push them out, but to actually push the new bearings in and seat them. And it's highly controlled and almost no effort at all. And so it's really, really, it's it's a lot of fun. Uh, it's a great tool to have in the shop. We've used it to straighten all sorts of stuff, forge all sorts of things, horseshoe nail hooks, put the head under, one watt, and the horseshoe nail hook's head is flat and ready to go. Mm -hmm. um yeah so many so mm -hmm. many uses cool dad says i made the mistake of skimping on the table for my number four and it twisted like a pretzel yep yep it'll do that yeah They're, they have a lot of inertia a lot of rotational inertia that comes around and when they hit and they come to that halt it has to put all that energy somewhere mm-hmm Bob's Fab and Welding. I need info on affordable plasma table. Uh, best thing I can tell you is, you know, do your research there. I would say probably something like it, the Langmuir's is a pretty good affordable option that's pretty well vetted at this point. Um, I can't vouch for any of the other cheaper options out there. What type of programming or what type of uh, uh, prestigial, you know, what type of pedigree would be behind those. But I know my Langmuir table has survived many thousands of hours of work on it now. Uh, Black Collar says, does it seem like YouTube sent out all of the ma channel memberships? I will take a look. It looked um, a minute ago, it looked like it hadn't updated on our end with yeah. with those. So I don't, it may not show us. It may take a day or two to process. Mm -hmm. I, I, I know I there was think, a bunch. Yeah, I think it, I think it'll update it afterwards. Yeah. Yeah. Well, right here, it's a, on large, it says 35 new members up yeah, above it does there. Say, but I know there was But definitely... I think that was Lash Dream's members. Mm -hmm. Yeah, with yeah because he donated Lash Dream, a lot of members. Yeah, but I that believe that was the last. That number wasn't there this time. Okay. Well. And then, But he donated 70 memberships, plus yeah. additional people donated like five memberships. Plus and 20 memberships people, and a lot of memberships. Yeah. Like I said, so I think that was the, there. that was last stream's okay. thing, you know. Yes, we'll uh, have to look. I, I believe so. We'll have to, we'll, we'll have look, to look at that. Processes. And thank you for the $5. Again, mm -hmm. Black Collar Ironworks. 
<laughs> Benny Hill sounds like Roy setting you up to spend some money. <laughs> I might be. I might be. Down on your farm and forge, I'd love a water cutting table. They are nice. Um, they are not a. They're not as straightforward as you think. The CNC side of things. That's one thing I thought I could do with CNC. I thought I could just. Oh, it'll be easy. I just design a thing. I just put it in the machine, and the machine does the work, and I just walk away and go get me a cup of coffee and go, come back in an hour when it's done. And that's that's wrong on so many levels. So it does require an attention to detail, close eyes. There's like a billion things that could go wrong while it's cutting um, that you have to anticipate and pre-anticipate. And so the logistics around running the CNC bed is the probably the most trying thing about it you know once you get over the software hurdle and figuring out how to do it um it is the it's the logistics so it's all the things that aren't included in the promotional details of a cnc plasma bed like where you're going to stick it um the fact that it blows water all over your shop how are you handling that <laughs> the fact that there's plasma sand where are you dumping that where are you mm -hmm. dumping the plasma sand where's it going especially if you cut tens of thousands of pounds like thomas and i have been doing um where do you put that stuff right um there's just there's a lot of logistics um around it that's you know not overly apparent until you get into it you know once you really get into it then you're like oh okay yeah there's a lot of there's a lot of back end things here i didn't think about you know even down to the computer that you use because you can't use a slow computer especially if you have a, a g code file that is very trying you know, one of our most trying files, I think, has like 80,000 lines of code that the computer has to read. Mm -hmm. And a line of code isn't just a singular digit. A line of code is like, might be 10 digits long, 10 different operations, 10 G code points long. And it had 80,000 lines of those. So you have to have a computer that can handle that. Most modern computers can, but... Um, you know, it's just not as easy as fire it up and go. That's the way the brochure makes it out like it'd be. Oh, I need to plug it in and start cutting. It makes you money. <laughs> no, it don't. <laughs> mm -hmm. But can I say that it's worth it? Yes, it is worth it, though, if you're interested in getting one. Metal Man says, I can't wait to weld up my swedge block stand I picked up at Virginia last weekend. Awesome. I can't wait for you to weld that up either. Course. Show us, send us some photos. Love to see it. Yeah, tag us. Yeah, tag us. And Corey Shire says, silly question. What's the difference between number two and number five, number six, etc., on fly presses? Okay, so that is supposed to, modern fly presses, that is supposed to represent the tonnage or the, ton, the output tonnage that it is. Now, it's a bit more complex than that. Because like a number two, a number five, a number six, they might have different screw pitches and they might have different diameter screws. So the amount of the screw, the pitch, um, how many uh, lands there are in it. So, you know, is it a double helix? Is it a triple helix? Is it a single helix? That all dictates on the tonnage as well. So so there's, uh, there's a sheet out there that someone produced uh, that showed what it was. So if you measured your... The screw that you had that told you roughly what tonnage your fly press was because not all of them are labeled with number six on the side or number two but the modern ones that john oh john ellie over at blacksmith supply sells the number indicates the tonnage so a uh, number two is two ton a number four is four number five is five and six so on and so forth that is the actual tonnage that it is. Now, there's some older fly presses that were that are much bigger, and they're labeled a number two. Well, does that mean it's only a two-ton output press? No, it's got a four-foot diameter flywheel on it. It's not putting out just two tons. Those are like your 20-ton fly presses. So in those cases, in order to gauge what those are in tonnage, you actually have to go by the chart that's uh, that tells you what their screw pitch and things like that is capable of putting out. So hopefully that, that helps you there. Um, Possum Sausage says, do you think you will sway more towards plasma cut goods as your channel takes off? Or will you keep doing hand forged products and plasma cut is its own thing? 
So goods, I guess, I guess what you're, um, I guess what you're asking, if I'm assuming what you're ask, asking, is goods for like for sale to clients, is is the way I kind of read that read mm -hmm. that question. Um, my the the work that I'm interested in doing for clients or selling to clients that I plan on doing, they are hand forged, one of a kind, one of a kind artwork pieces. Um, I'm two years out on those, so for me to even touch somebody's work right now, and so those, so so those are very much they involve me. Well, then because they involve me, they involve everything about me. I'm doing the YouTube, I'm doing the live streams, I'm doing, I'm running the CNC business right with with Thomas and Jess here, and and like I have all of that. I'm demonstrating, I'm teaching, I'm being going around to conferences and this and that and what have you. So it envelops me so that it's they're waiting on me. That's that's my time frame. As the channel grows, there may be less and less time to take on any additional work. And so then I get even more choosy of what type of work I do. Ideally I would love for the work that I do to be meaningful to me in some way and to be meaningful to a client in some way and for those two things to connect with my particular flair my style my french baroque ironwork that's what i want those things to kind of come together on uh, i however do not want to take and be doing production work again where i'm slamming out you know five thousand of one thing i've done it i've been there don't need to do any more won't be going back to it however however Thomas works with me in the shop full time now, and so Thomas is at a different uh, is at a different place in his smithing journey. In the shop, he's coming up through the ranks. I'm teaching him what I know. Right, he's learning a lot. There's opportunity there for him to take on projects that are plasma cut oriented or things that are like meat skewers. He sold that he designed and created all on his own that we added the website. He sold a coat rack he made the mm -hmm. other day he was super stoked about it and I was stoked for him about it um, and he designed and created it on his own and it's not a coat rack I would have made it's not a price point that I would have that I would have ever even worked at except for way back in the day where Thomas is now so you know that's an exciting thing to have in the shop so that dynamics a little bit different uh, in the shop so as I go along who knows we might find some other little production thing that hits off really well on the Etsy and Thomas is going right along forging those things and keeping up with those. Maybe we add another person to the equation at some point and they're forging things mm -hmm. on Etsy for us and, and you know going about doing their thing. Um, we'll have to see we'll mm -hmm. have to see how it goes in the future. Mm -hmm. As far as the channel, did you have something you want to add there? Um, oh no, I think you were getting ready to address it. Okay, what? Well, oh, the I was just gonna say, yeah, yeah. The yeah. video the, they might be asking also from the aspect of videos. Yeah, like, well, I was I was gonna yeah, hit them with that's that why next. I was so waiting. yeah, that way I covered my bases on both. Mm -hmm. um, as far as the channel, the direction of the channel, my channel has always been a variety channel, and it will always be a variety channel around blacksmithing. So there are going to be times where I'm obviously marketing blanks, right? Because the CNC business doesn't go anywhere if no one's buying any CNC blanks, right? Like, so that that hinders me from being able to do other things, right? So obviously I'm going to market CNC stuff, right? I am going to offer more and more blanks to you all out there. I feel that it's a missed opportunity for folks who stick their nose up at blanks. That I. I, I wish I had a CNC plasma cutter way back in the day when I first got started. We I could have cleaned I could have cleaned house on all of these craft shows and these mm -hmm. art fairs and stuff. Because I had a all of my in stuff the cabinet from years ago. Yeah, all of my stuff was just so time and labor intensive mm -hmm. that I had to charge a bunch because I was trying to make my living at it. You know, I had a wife and three kids to support. So you know, mm -hmm. I was trying to keep a roof over our heads, so I had to charge a bunch. But man, if I would have had the opportunity, and by the way, you think it's a new thing. There's not that many people. There was one dude who sold blanks mm -hmm. back when I was in mm -hmm. that market. Mm -hmm. One dude, Stony Point Forge. That was it. The only person in the game mm -hmm. making blanks. Mm -hmm. That was it. 
And so if he didn't have it, you didn't have it. That's that's it. You know, if mm. you know, or you could pay a lot of money for him to create create it for you. So so that so if I would have had a CNC uh, plasma cutter and even had the inkling of knowing how to use it back in the day, oh my gosh, that would have been the thing. Mm -hmm. Because I would have cleaned house at every street fair, every art festival, you name it. Because it's an underappreciated tool for anybody who's starting their blacksmithing business uh, because it shortcuts time on you. And so with that being said, that so going forward with YouTube videos, my videos will be a mix. It'll be a menagerie. It'll be tool reviews. There will be some sponsored stuff in there. There will be some affiliate type things out there. There will be stuff that's just personal projects of my own interest. Um, I did that Baroque door knocker. There will be a lot more videos like that. They do terrible. Those, those videos do terrible because they're not beginner centric. They, they, they just do terrible. It's just a fact. It's truth. It's truth. They do terrible comparatively to a video of me smashing some quarters together, right? Or me, you know, smashing a Harbor Freight anvil, right? Like all of a sudden, Roy's real popular for smashing the Harbor Freight anvil, but nobody paid attention to the last 20 videos I did on Baroque ironwork. Mm -hmm. So those will be out there too for those who care to watch. And what you get served by YouTube will be based upon your own viewing pleasures and delight because that's <laughs> what YouTube does it by. But the content will always be there. The content, I plan on going over the whole entire fundamental series again because it's just good to keep putting that out there and that there's more exposure. Some of the fundamental playlist series I have, they need about a billion more watch time hours. Uh, I'd rather they have a hundred million views than have a hundred million views on me smashing some quarters. I'd rather them have a hundred million views, but they don't, they don't get the traction. So mm -hmm. I might put out that some more content like that as well, but that's kind of, you kind of get the idea of it. As the channel grows, that doesn't really make a big difference to me. The content that I'll be doing, it will be the content that interests me the most mm -hmm. uh, going forward. Which will vary widely as it has yeah. across the last seven years. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's just varied widely over the last seven years. And occasionally you'll get a rant video from me because that's what I do. <laughs> I, I do that. I, I do like I do like doing those, you know, so. They were having a side combo about how rare a Roy knife is. Somebody said rare, rare yeah. is gold and somebody, <laughs> and then yeah. Darren's like, as rare as hen's teeth. Aaron does, <laughs> Darren doesn't want one because he says his knife collection has standards. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There you go. That's good. So yeah, so so the, the con, it's a great question. It's a great question of where that's going. Will I change, you know, like that's ultimately a question on all the regular subscribers' minds, right? With popularity, does Roy change? Hmm. Not really. <laughs> just not really. I'm just the same goofball that I've always been. The difference is I'm a lot more relaxed now on camera than I've ever been in my past. And so that's really the only difference between me now and me eight years ago. You know, I'm less sensitive to comments now because I just realize like there's people who. Well, just people are dumb. <laughs> There's people who parrot other dumb comments just because they think they're funny, and and that's not actually a personal attack on you at all. They just mm -hmm. they're they're just trying to be part of the tribe, you know. Mm -hmm. And you know what better is to kick a man while he's down, you know, or <laughs> you know, or whatever it is so mm -hmm. so i i've gotten less less sensitive to those things so there's that's why there's been less roy rants <laughs> mm -hmm. you know as i've went along but i what i really hope what i really hope to do with the channel if this thing continues to grow if there's still the the reach and we don't completely implode in a couple of weeks and all mm -hmm. the sub fancy subscribers just poof and we're back to the regular old crowd my hope is to take that reach and bless others with it that's it so that's that's where i'm going with the channel um and anything in business i of course anybody and i hope i am a capitalist through and through buddy i am a businessman through and through i hope each and every last one of you are successful i hope the business is successful i hope to do 100 million dollars in the business why not because with more with with more 
there's a higher there's a higher responsibility that's given as as God makes you ruler over more things there is a there's a higher responsibility to you to take and have to um, bless others with those things and as that business grows there's more opportunity right you could do a lot more damage with a 12 gauge than what you could do with a pea shooter right so I hope to be able to give it both barrels in the future yep that's 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 my goal I'd, I'd like to be a regular old hand cannon <laughs> Corey Shire says, yes, you were kind of stiff in your earlier videos, but the content is just as good as it is now. Yep. <laughs> Metal Man wants to make his first flux, flux, flux spoon. <laughs> yeah, flux, flux, flux. <laughs> Kyle Jones, where everyone go? 55 in here. Yeah. The giveaway the stopped. Stuff. The music stopped. <laughs> so, again, I'm not bugged by that. I'm not. I am not bugged by that in the least bit. We're long-winded, and, you know, it's 826 at night, right? Mm -hmm. And you guys are getting the show after the show, a little prequel. This is generally, by the way, for anybody who's the members, when anybody who has been gifted memberships or thinking about being members, this is generally what the member show looks like, the, the stream after the stream. It's just me and Jess hanging out, mm -hmm. chatting. It's usually more low-key. It's slower pace. I get on some wild tangents, like I do. Lots of Roy rants. You know, lots of Roy rants. I fall and asleep while he so. rants. <laughs> <laughs> Douglas yeah. Karmas, I had my first blacksmithing class last weekend. Awesome, awesome, very great. So, but yeah, so <laughs> yeah, it's something I've been it's something I've been thinking about for quite a while. Uh, you know, on I just ever since we had this like quick little popularity moment. I, Jessica can attest to this. I've been sitting around just kind of wondering, like, what does it all mean? Like, what is any of this mm -hmm. <laughs> that that we're doing here? Um, should I do anything different? Should I try anything different? You know, oh, she's been like, we need to do some more quarter mm -hmm. videos. I'm like, nah. Ugh. <laughs> no, I did it once. Mm. She's right. I'm sure she's right. I, I need to do some more quarter videos make mocha mate out of quarter videos and do different things so she's right i should parrot that content out mm -hmm. but uh <laughs> you haven't hardly had time to film much of anything <laughs> no i haven't had any time to sit down and film anything at all um, i got several videos in the tank that i need to sit and edit not like mm -hmm. i got that to do yet so but yeah i hope i can just keep on being a blessing and encouragement to people that's the real hope I hope there's more people now that I can be a blessing and encouragement to. And uh, hopefully that's the way it's seen and felt. Kathy McGillagravy says it's fun watching you and Jess. She has a cute giggle and Roy, you are just entertaining. <laughs> oh, I'm glad I could be entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> Fingers oh. one. Instead of telling stories, Roy just rants for an hour while everyone goes to bed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's like one person still in yep. the comments at the end. Yep. Well, uh, some people say I'm a lot like a lot more likable of a guy in person than I am on TV. So I, I've had that comment several times come up. <laughs> oh, maybe one video out of twenty could be coins. It could. Yeah. It could be. Yeah, it could be. It could be. Oh, Jessica's thinking about. I did a. I did another Mokume thing a while ago, and it was making a Mokume. Uh, cross. It's back from 2017. Yeah, back from 2017. Jessica's going to do another, just for all of you subscribers out there, regular ones out there, Jessica's going to do another re-edit of that and see if we could repeat successes or if it was just a complete fluke. Yep. So she's going to do another one. We're going to see it. Mm -hmm. See what happens. See? So see what wish us luck. See how it goes. <laughs> if you see oh. it circulating and people yeah. bashing on it, you know why. <laughs> yeah. To eliminate to eliminate any conspiracy theory, yes, we are after clout chasing. That's what we're doing. <laughs> just, just for the hell of it to see what happens. You never know. You know. We'd be like ten million views. You know. Mm -hmm. Ten million subscribers all of a sudden. We got a diamond get, play button. You'll never get views on anything but coin stuff after that. Yeah. <laughs> be like uh, you have to be a coin channel or else. Well, then we'll start a second channel, you there know. You go. So. Like, no, we'll just keep doing what we do. 
Yeah. And just like every fifth video will be a coin <laughs> video, and you all will just have to suffer through it. You know, just <laughs> don't like watch Roy. it. You know? Enough with the coins. But enough with the coins, Roy. What are you Leave doing? Just being a coin video <laughs> channel? I'm like, yeah, they pay real well. So <laughs> that's exactly what I am now. <laughs> yes, after eight years of hard work trying to take and push through, you know, excellent ironwork, now I just make coins for a living because it's popular. <laughs> You know, I, I, I forge coins into bracelets and garbage, you know, who knows? No, let's hope not. Let's hope that's not what this devolves into. <laughs> Betty Phil says calm down. Um, yeah, I only I yeah. only edit the shorts. Roy does all the regular editing. But yep. we've considered a little bit outsourcing to an editor, but I'm not sure that it would actually be any easier because then you have yeah. to convey all your thoughts and feelings and what you had planned for the video like then you have to spend all that time communicating what the what editor. as whereas yeah. you might have just been able to edit it just as fast yourself and step back and forth so whatever happened to the second second secret channel and never got off the ground because we've been too busy <laughs> <laughs> it's been too busy with other stuff so well there there still is a super secret second channel and I do plan on putting, con I got videos in the tank to put on it. I just have to edit it. We've gotten too busy with other stuff mm -hmm. as of right now. But mm -hmm. there will be a super secret secondary channel that will be growing slowly. Mm -hmm. Yep. It's always good not to put all of your eggs in one basket, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. That's right. So. Mm -hmm. well, Anyways, with that, we should let Jessica do a do a little poem oh yes i want to thank everybody for joining us in this live stream i hope you had fun um i hope everybody enjoys their their giveaway items when they get them and uh you know i hope you guys go out there and make a difference in somebody in your life uh today tomorrow i, I hope you go out there and help out other smiths get their start and you know take what you take what you see here and you just do that in your own little circles in your own little communities and, and be a blessing to others um, if we get a lot more people doing that the world's going to be a lot better place i honestly truly believe that and I, you know and i'm just i feel very fortunate and i feel very blessed and i'm very humbled by the fact that i'm surrounded by such great friends online i, I really am and, and you know some of you just feel like family and, and i'm i'm super thankful for you well, some of you are family. That's all my <laughs> uh, comment. So, so thank you all so much for your continued support with your eyeballs, your watch time, your finances, just your good, you know, your kind words to us on the daily. We really couldn't do it without you. So thank you guys so much. And with that, I sign off. God bless each and every last one of you. And Jessica. Lead us out with a wonderful poem. All right. This one is called March, and I thought, how fitting. <laughs> so I'll read it. March. <clears throat> the rooster is crowing. The stream is flowing. The small birds twitter. The lake doth glitter. The green fields sleeps in the sun. The oldest and youngest are at work with the strongest. The cattle are grazing, their heads never raising. There are 40 feeding like one. Like an army defeated, the snow hath retreated, and now doth fare ill on top of the bare hill. The plowboy is whooping anon anon. There's joy in the mountains, there's life in the fountains. Small clouds are sailing, blue skies prevailing, the rain is over and gone. Written by William Wadsworth. <laughs>